Oh, are we live? Oh, we're live. Oh, this is weird. <laughs> All right, so no, I want to share some news today. I've been doing these Let's Play videos for well, like two weeks now, and I get a viewer here and there. My wife does one, one video, okay? Can't see her, can't hear her. She gets 11 immediately views. <laughs> And then when I message and I'm like, what's going on? Why did you guys want to watch me play? They're like, it's time for the enthusiasts. Yes! Oh my god! What's up, everybody? We're here. Uh, this is episode with 31? Yeah. 31. Oh, that's okay. Yeah. We're getting old, man. We're getting up there. Oh, so is our guest. Yeah. Hello. Uh, all right. This is Jesse. i um, been my good friend here. And uh, man, that seems to never have this kid. <laughs> it's been coming <laughs> yeah. for like nine months. All right? <laughs> yeah. Let it be born already. Yeah. Will Zabo. Yeah. And today, we have a special guest. Uh, he's seven foot tall. Uh, he looks like he's 12. Weighed in at 450 pounds. <laughs> he has a beard. Say hi, Ryan. Hi. How are you doing? I'm super good. You're excited to be I'm here. I'm excited to be here. It is an exciting For sure. Day. This is. You didn't know if you're going into a podcast or, <laughs> you know, a torture chamber. I listened to, exact, either way. to exactly 65 minutes of the first episode. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I got to burn through this. And then I was working and I was like, I got to pay attention to this. But I can't work at the same time. So then it just didn't work out anymore. I, you know what? I do listen to our podcast. Is that work? It's really weird. I listen to it, but then like, my boss will legit think it's me talking. She's like, you say something? I was like, no, I'm listening to myself. So, like, okay. I, uh, I have to listen to us about four or five times in one night because I edit these videos. I edit. So first I edit the regular SoundCloud. And then I have to make our video for YouTube. I hear us about four or five times. By the fifth time, I'm like, God, I hate us. <laughs> we sound like, God. Every joke by the fourth time is just the worst joke it's, of it's not, it's not that funny. You know, I get to that point where, like, I, I'll say something, and then I'll listen back, and I'll cringe at my own joke. Like, oh, that wasn't funny. Yeah. I should stop talking. That's not a good idea. It's like, oh, that was kind of racist. I didn't even think about that it. Was, yeah, <laughs> That's happened multiple times with me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I seem to only stray towards Asians. Hey, I've noticed that, man. I love Asians. I don't know why I feel like so mean to Asian people. So, so what do you what do you do, Ryan? Obviously, uh, you, you like our podcast. I do. I love it so much. <laughs> yeah, awesome. sixty five minutes worth. Mm. <laughs> Good stuff. Um, I met Jesse like a million and a half years ago. It has been a long time, and I've seen him approximately ten. Ten times. times. We go through these spurts, man. We're like, we're best buddies. We stand out every week. All right, I'll see you in two years. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. So, Jesse asked me to be on, and I was a little nervous because I'm not super into everything, but I have opinions. Awesome, awesome. Like so, what are, you, what are you currently playing? Uh, currently, I just started playing ARMS on the Switch. I love um. it. I love it so much. God. It's so good. Uh, I see why you brought him on, just to gang up on me, huh? You're welcome. Let also, me phone a friend. <laughs> <laughs> also on Overwatch on PS4. Love Overwatch. That's actually uh, one of the topics we're going to get into. Oh, okay. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. That's why I brought him on. That's why I brought him on. <laughs> yeah. Like, that guy? I made plays it's Overwatch. It's really good. I also forgot. Uh, I have some news. Oh. Um, I was invited onto another YouTube channel. What? Uh, we've recorded a video. It's got a bunch of hits already. Uh, if you guys want to check it out, uh, her name is Miss Ray TV. We did the uh, accent challenge, and I made a fool of myself oh. on camera. Uh, but go check it out. And she gives us a nice plug, but it was a good time. That's awesome. I was super embarrassed because I realized right away, one, it sounds really racist to try accents. <laughs> Number two, I am no good. <laughs> I go to the, his full alert. I go to do an Asian one, and my eyes just started squinting. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I felt so good. <laughs> Tilts to the yeah, side. <laughs> oh, oh. That's exactly what happened. Uh, the pork fry rice. Why did you instantly go to a Chinese food place? I don't know. <laughs> but it was super, super awkward. But it was a fun time. So if you guys get to check that out, and if you like, she does makeup tutorials. She does purse reviews and 
bunch of funny videos. She did um, a hot noodle challenge a couple weeks ago, which was hilarious. Her and her uh, guest on that show couldn't get through an entire bowl. It was very entertaining, but that is Miss Ray TV. Hilarious. That's awesome. Thank you, Miss Ray, for having uh, Jesse on. Yes. <laughs> Notice she picked me out of the two of us. Well, I don't know. <laughs> um, that's awesome, though. Uh, so what have you been playing lately? Besides your wife, obviously, uh, showing you up on streaming. Oh, that and, wasn't a joke at the beginning. She really and, 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 and she wasn't just showing you up. Apparently, she's showing me yeah. up, too. Yeah. Um, I'm, uh, Transformers. Transformers Devastation. I really started getting into that past two days. It's, all it's really good, by the way. Yeah, yeah. You really were streaming that, that too. Which That's what I do. Yeah. yeah it's Transformers. or robots in disguise. Heard of them. They were pretty popular. Decepticons? Yes, and Autobots. <laughs> I'm done with Crash. I'm not playing it anymore. I don't feel good about myself. I'm Is really it the upset. the pack that just came yeah. out? Yeah. So I, um, <laughs> on my, one of my days off, my girlfriend fell asleep on me. I was like, you know what? That's fine. She's pregnant. This is now me time. I want to play some Crash. Saw there was a trophy for 99 lives. I played the same level until I got 99 lives. <laughs> I now have that trophy. Yeah. And I kind of hate myself at the same time because I still haven't even beaten the first game. You're welcome. I farmed the fourth level. What level? The fourth one. I'm stuck at the bridge. Oh, I got stuck at that for a while, too. Finally beat that one. I did that one after I got my 99 lives. What? It, why, man? Oh, bro, it's, it's not enjoyable. It brought me down to 54. <laughs> yeah, it's not enjoyable. I'm going to let you play it today before you leave because right. I, I don't like it. It's not fun. You ever play Crash? I didn't. I wasn't an early PlayStation guy. I jumped in on PlayStation 2. We did it, I man. passed on PlayStation 3. I still insist them all time, so PlayStation 2. <laughs> Yeah, I never had a PS1. I was a strict N64 man. You know what my first game on PS1 was? Rugrats. Oh. Know. Mine was Final Fantasy VIII, unfortunately. We'll just jumping right in there. <laughs> <laughs> like, let's see what this baby can do. <laughs> I can see the difference on me. <laughs> you were like, I want a hardcore RPG. I was like, I want to see what the Rugrats are up to. Yeah. <laughs> Even when they're not on TV right now. <laughs> I, I actually got eight just because of the cover. Because I was like, this guy looks cool. He has a sword, and it has a gun in the sword. I was like, this is going to be the best. I, I well, remember the- I was at the store with my mom, and she was letting me pick out. I really wanted Metal Gear Solid, but there was no way. I was asking my mom to buy me a rated M game with my PlayStation. So, I'll take Rugrats for right now So <laughs> I come back with my dad. <laughs> so that's what I did. I got Rugrats. I enjoyed it. And then, like, two weeks later, I was at the store with my dad and picked up Metal Gear. What do you have to do in a Rugrats game? Um, <laughs> roll around, roll gun. around, and roll around. Stop Angelica, collect like reptars. Yeah. <laughs> they did. Uh, they did like famous episodes, and you would play them out. It was actually pretty cool. There was a really awesome mini game for the uh, bottle chocolate milk bottle episode, <laughs> where you had to play football. It was actually really fun, though. Huh. I used to get so nervous when Angelica got close to me. <laughs> and you couldn't lose in that game. That was the worst. <laughs> yeah, I. Uh, Playing Crash, I realized either I was really good at games as a kid, or I did not remember the frustration that came with this game as a kid. Yeah. You, uh, you know what, too, is I remember playing Crash 3 more than anything. And Warped the, is my favorite as and well. And that's the one that, with the controls, got fixed a lot, because one... Oh. But I refuse. Right now, I'm trying to beat them in order. I yep. refuse to just go to my favorite and one. That's what I Because I don't do. want to go back and be like, this is unplayable. Yep. Not doing it. But, um, yeah. I've just been playing Crash, uh, farming some Diablo 3. I saw Diablo 3. Yeah. Cool. Played some Oxygen, uh, Oxygen Not Included. Uh, streamed that for a little bit. I think I posted the video of it. I made you. I made um, M-Dog and Steven. Hmm. Uh, rest in peace, Steven. I'm sorry. <laughs> Last Steven died? <laughs> yeah. yeah. In the game? Yeah. Okay, you gotta clear that. <laughs> Look, he died. I was like, what? Uh, we'll out. say this. When his body died, you have the option to build a tombstone for them. Some people I wouldn't have, I did for Steven. Nice. But, uh, yeah, so I can't figure out how to get the electricity to run through stuff. So I have these machines that make oxygen because it's in space, so you're building your settlement. And, um... 
I can't figure out how to get the electricity to go in a circuit. So, no oxygen. <laughs> and Steven doesn't have an iron lung, apparently, because everyone else is still alive, just holding their breath. <laughs> but Steve, I, I looked, and I, I was looking at, like, you know, who's available and who can do what jobs. And I had four people, because uh, I, I recruited another one. And I was like, why am I down to three? So I look on the screen, I'm like, who is missing? I was like, oh no, Steven! <laughs> and I just see a, a guy laying on the floor, and I click over him, like, please don't be dead. Let me find some way to, like, save him. It was like, no, he is not breathing. I was like, oh no. <laughs> that happens, man. You're murdering. That's fine. That's good. But, uh, let's just jump into it. To the news. news? Yeah, sorry. Oh, that was terrible, yeah. There. Yeah. Let's try it again. The news? news? Yeah, okay. Um, so Matt Reeves, who's going to direct Batman, said that his series might be a trilogy. Ooh, isn't that what everybody does? If you're a superhero. Yeah, I mean, if you're a superhero. Don't, don't take this. If don't take this away. <laughs> don't, right now, you're dumbing it down. <laughs> okay, I, well, let me rephrase that. Of course, I'm excited for it. I'm glad it's going to be a trilogy. I'm just going to jump into it right away, and I'm going to ask Ryan. Obviously, we're going to get the Joker. In this new trilogy, because Jared Leto, right. and he had the four seconds in Suicide Squad. Right. I oh, actually got cut down to three seconds <laughs> for the theatrical run. Really mad I about apologize. it. I uh, apologize. What other villains would you like to see in this new Batman franchise? <sighs> I know that they can never do it without it looking awful, but I was always partial to Clayface. Ooh. <laughs> I do like Clayface. Again, don't do it. Don't even try. <laughs> All right. Um, Clayface is I will never get enough Harley Quinn in anything, and I also, whenever I think of Batman, I always think of the animated series with that episode where all the villains were sitting around playing poker, talking about oh, how, how they almost got, yeah, how they almost got him. <laughs> Favorite part of the episode is when Killer Croc's like, "My turn," and they're like, "What'd you do?" I threw a rock at him, and they're like, "And eh? he's like, it was a big rock." <laughs> oh, it was such a good episode. I'm glad you remember that, actually. I would like them to somehow make a good Riddler. I agree. Not Jim Carrey Riddler. I agree. More like Arkham Riddler. Uh, Me and him on our first episode, you should know this if you watch it, he said he wanted Johnny Depp, and I hate that idea. I would never want Johnny Depp for him. I don't want that, but (laughs) I feel like he'd be Willy Wonka again. I feel like it might be too world busting, but I think Joseph Gordon Levitt could do a good Riddler. Ooh, I never thought of that. That would be really neat. I so I actually wouldn't mind Joseph Gordon Levitt in the universe, but I think I would much rather have another role for him, only because it also might make a little more sense. And what role is that? Red Hood. Huh? Red Hood. Red Hood. Uh, you know who I and I'm going to uh, take it back to Riddler. I would love to see Kevin Spacey play the Riddler. Only because I think Kevin Spacey does no wrong. <laughs> yeah, he's yeah. amazing. He's amazing? Yeah, he's I fantastic. do agree with that. I just went to a show in New York that he did. Really? A one-man show. Because in Arthur Ashe Tennis Stadium. Stadium. And I was like, it's Kevin Spacey doing a one-man show? <laughs> he's fantastic. I am there. <laughs> uh, yeah. He's delightful. Um, so, but yeah, that's awesome news. Three movies, that's going to be you, great. I used to want to see Killer Croc until we got the Suicide Squad Killer I Croc. I like Killer Croc. I didn't hate him. My problem was with him, he wasn't as... Physically intimidating to me, like height wise and yeah. build. He didn't look because Killer Croc towers over Batman. Yeah. The Killer Croc we got didn't really look like he was that big because he was a real human being. Okay, human beings aren't that big. Now, I'm just saying. They have, they have oh, 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 we're going to use real human beings in our fictional world. I'm just saying <laughs> they could have. They. I'm so glad they could have CGI'd him, and I'm so yeah. glad they didn't. Mr. Echo from Lost. He was Mr. Echo from Lost. <laughs> yes. That is the first thing I noticed. Um, but I thought he did a really good job. And I also, I got to give it up to the actor. He acted with so much makeup on his face. Yeah. Like, that That had to hurt. Just to think about opening his mouth probably <laughs> was so much pressure. So, I'd like Killer Croc, but to me, they already ruined him by Suicide Squad. Not that I didn't like him. It's If you turn him into a villain now, it's going to, you know, take away from him being a hero in Suicide Squad. Well, I don't think it will, because they are villains. I mean, what are you going to do? Not have Harley Quinn and Batman? I agree, but to me, Harley Quinn's easier to be like, oh, I'm back with Joker, I'm crazy. Where, like, I feel like, same thing with Deadshot. It'd be really hard to make him a villain right now. Like, he changed for his daughter at the end. I don't know. know I I feel like that's the nice thing about Suicide Squad. What it did was it humanized those villains so that you know a side of them that you can relate to. 
And now when you see that movie where he's going against Batman, you might not actually root for Batman. If you're a Deadshot fan, you might be like, yo, I kind of actually want Deadshot to get out of here because I really like that character. And I think that's what's interesting. Like, same thing with, um, you know, animated series and stuff like that. When you see, like, those episodes that kind of just focus more on the villain than did Batman, you're kind of like, man, I... Like the anime like, series when they gave Mr. Freeze a backstory, yeah. and you understood where he was coming from, man. Or that whole uh, spinoff with Harley Quinn and Poison Ivy. Oh, yeah. That's you know, you're kind of like, oh, yeah, man, well, like, these girls are just trying to live their life. <laughs> <laughs> They're hungry, man. Well, that's so, kind of how I felt for Catwoman in, like, Dark Knight Rises. I mean, yeah, she's, yeah. she's a very pretty actress. I like her. She's very pretty. You know what I liked about Batman v Superman? And I know you didn't like it because you're hipster, <laughs> Ryan. Um, I didn't always agree with Batman in the movie. I felt like he took it a little far sometimes. Yeah. And I feel like he was very kind of Republican sometimes with his like straight thoughts like Superman's an enemy. I don't know where he's from. I don't like it. And I really like that about Batman because at the end of the day, it's some crazy billionaire that dresses up like a bat. I shouldn't well, always agree with him. I mean, if you read the uh, Dark Knight Returns series, he was a lot like that when he, as he got older. It wasn't so, um, I'm not going to kill, I'm not going to do this. It was, all right, you know what, I've been doing this. I'm 60 now, I'm still doing it. I need to end this. Yeah. You, <laughs> he you mean, snapped the Joker. I mean, you know, he paralyzed the Joker. Even um, if you look, and it was only the rated R version of it, but they had that line, in the movie where the old blind guy's talking to Clark Kent and he's like, there's a new kind of evil in that man. And I like the fact that they kind of explain, like, now Batman might be taking it too far. He's actually branding, you know, villains and stuff. That's, yeah. That's a neat idea. I mean, I know that he just gets so wrapped up in contingency plans and if this guy gets bad, this is how you take him out. But maybe it's just because he's getting older and older and older and he's like, well, if I don't make a plan right now, then we're not going to be able to stop him later. So maybe that's why he goes. Maybe he's seen it. Nuts. He's forgetting. That's <laughs> what, what makes me really excited about this new trilogy is literally we had we got introduced to a Batman that literally told Alfred there's a one percent chance that Superman's our villain, so we got to kill him. <laughs> that makes sense logically to me. <laughs> to the end, him kind of getting redeemed and showing that Superman was part of this world. He was a human being, and you know what I mean. And, I'd like to see where they're going with this Batman, like a new redemption yeah. Batman. Because we did see at the end he chose not to kill Lex, which I think that was his new, you know, his new path. He also he didn't did break it. Yeah. So, Brandon, you know. memory points the wall instead. I remember that. So I think that that's going to be something they really touch on in the Justice League and in the solo movies. Do you want to see the Red Hood in this trilogy? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I want to see the Red Hood at some point. Because I really think that the Red Hood and the comics do really well. Like, it's... It's not like uh, his comics do bad either. I think he's a character that you can bring him in as Batman and you can keep him going like we've talked about before with Red Hood and the Outlaws, his own solo stuff. You like Red Hood? I saw the animated movie a very long time ago. I don't remember a whole lot about it. Jason Todd, second Robin, got right. killed, came back. And Batman v Superman, they hinted to the Jason Todd death with the uh, Robin suit off messed yes. up. Real quick, though, before we jump subjects... Watch Batman v Superman again. I looked at that Robin costume again. There's no pants. It's just so, top, top so, and boots. What's going on there, Batman? Huh? Maybe it's Dick Grayson. <laughs> no, either way. <laughs> but Dick kept the undies. <laughs> either way, Batman, you're allowed pants. And you're like, here you go, Robin. Enjoy your suit. It's a little cold. I don't care. I don't care, sir. What did I say? Enjoy. Enjoy your suit. <laughs> so I just went to California last week. And we went to the WB tour. And we got to see all the real costumes. Like that right what? costume right there. Oh, that's sick. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> that is awesome. See? Oh, and there's, there's the pants. They're, They're shorts. shorts. Yeah, yeah, it's weird. <laughs> oh, man, look at that. I mean, how did you not break in and take that? <laughs> there wasn't even glass around it. What? They touched it. <laughs> they were like, please, no touching. Please, <laughs> we trust mankind. I got to see all those suits. No. Uh, I won't touch, but I'm going to inject something onto that. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I did like that. Uh, Is that the, the main one? scene? No, that's the. Oh, oh, that's where sad. Batman decides to just yeah. start breaking necks. AK people <laughs> breaking necks and turns <laughs> turns into a uh, Rambo. Yeah. Um, let's move on with our next movie news. Saw getting Whoa. another one. I it's know. not even and and I, I, I saw thought, the final chapter. <laughs> well, the, yeah, what I thought was really funny was I uh, I read the title and I was like, "Oh, it's not even called Saw." I was like, "Jigsaw, you god dang. <laughs> <laughs> you jerks." <laughs> so this one's called Jigsaw. Do we know if it's a prequel? Are we going to I don't know what it is. All right, first off, I'm just 
you said in the notes, you were like, are you excited about this? The answer to your question, no. Yes. Okay. <laughs> then I put, well, too bad, because right. you're getting one. I am excited. Are you really? Yeah. Okay, first off, I love the first two movies. The fir- first two movies, to me, are one of the best when it comes. Like, I feel like if you were a film student, you should watch the first movie. The first opinion. one's really good. Because it, it, the way it makes you think you're so clever, like, oh, I know who's behind all this. It's that stupid nurse guy. And then it's like, no. We tricked you into thinking of that. And the same with the second movie. such and a creepy... Can you remember when the guy picks the carol up and throws her in the needles? Yes. Yeah, I was feel so <laughs> bad for the second yeah. movie. Yeah. But after that is when, to me, it jumped the shark tank, and those movies just came so ridiculous. Oh, they are. At the yeah. end of the day, Linkin Park was in that movie. Like, come on. <laughs> They're not good. And no. it was all about gore. Yep. That's another issue. They're all about gore, and it's like, have we as a society moved past those gore fest movies? I, I really hope so because yeah. I think that that's something horror horror has a problem with. Because ever since Saw, horror has kind of turned in that direction. Not just Saw, but a lot of movies have focused more on the gore aspect rather than you know good scare. Actual, well, besides good scare, good story. Yeah, I always go to somehow the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre had more heart and story than this remake they had because of nothing but a gore fest. Yeah. Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Yeah. I I don't think I've ever actually even seen the original. I only saw the one from like 2004 or whatever it was from no, no. Jessica Biel. If this is a prequel, how are they going to do that? That guy's pretty old. I feel like they don't need to do a prequel because they did a prequel inside the first movie when it's like, yeah, totally they show story. him he gets cancer and yeah. he gets mad at people who don't have cancer. And you can't, you can't make it sound like he was doing <laughs> it before. Is that what happened? <laughs> <laughs> he turned to his wife, I have cancer, I'm mad everybody else doesn't have cancer. So, <laughs> if you don't have cancer, you don't appreciate life and I'm going to take it from uh, you. I, I don't... His son? I don't know where they're going with this story. Lawrence Gordon, man. Dr. Gordon. I Wasn't know. he at the end of the last yeah, one? Yeah. I, I honestly haven't seen one since three. Okay. I saw, like, well, parts I'm of sure they only did Spo- that. Yeah, spoiler alert <laughs> for anybody that hasn't seen the last song somehow and is still interested in it. Skip five minutes. <laughs> Hopefully we don't talk past that. <laughs> All right. At the end, you've the doctor from the first one. They cut his leg off, which is probably the most hilarious part in movie history. Yes. You find out at the end of the last film that he's behind everything after Jigsaw's death. He didn't really leave it to the girl. He left it to this doctor. And like, that's how people would have, like, keys sewn inside of them and all that stuff. Because he was a surgeon, so he was able to do that without yeah. killing people. So, uh, that's how this last one ends. I don't see... I feel no. like that only happened because every thread in the world was like, what if it's Dr. Gordon? Yeah. <laughs> and they were like, you know, that's a good, good idea! idea. <laughs> Wait a minute, you're going to tell me we have... <laughs> this is perfect! <laughs> so, I, I can't see it going in that direction. I feel like there's going to be some big secret, secret element like Jigsaw cloned himself. Because they, they killed his wife, right? Yeah. Yes. She was killed by the police officer. <laughs> Jigsaw 2033. <laughs> He's driving next to I really don't understand why they're... <laughs> Just his brain. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> <It's crying. laughs> I feel like they've gone too far with this franchise. Like, there were seven, man. There were seven. 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 <laughs> Final we're about, to have, we're about to have eight. Well, it reminds me of Friday the 13th, where it got so ridiculous. Was six, Space! Was six all three days? Six was Saw 3D. <laughs> and he got that ludicrous, man. Like, Luda. Yeah, it was It was insane. There was, at the end of the day, and I remember, like, knowing every time I would get to see a trailer for a new Saw, I'd get mad. I'd get actually pissed off. Like, why do they keep making these? Because they're just like, we cannot let Fast and the Furious take this record. <laughs> yes, that's exactly what it is. They saw they were like, really staying. They're like, Saw just got to be like for three more movies. <laughs> <laughs> that might be it, man. <laughs> So, I think in the lead of sequels, it is James Bond, which will never be touched. Yeah, it will never no. be touched. And then, uh, second place is Jason with 11 films. I was thinking he had, like, 14. I don't know. 11. 11. That is counting the Jason vs. Friday franchise. So, is there nothing else that has more sequels than that? I can't think of anything else. What else we got on the news? Uh, well, the Castlevania Netflix series is doing really well, and apparently it's getting a second season. Okay. What do you think of it? Uh, I've actually only seen the first two episodes. I was going to watch an episode this morning, but, uh, but I, did. I woke up really late, so I had to just basically sprint here. I'm actually glad Ryan's here for this one. Uh, do you like Castlevania? I've never played it. I know a little bit about it. Perfect. Did you want to have any interest in the show? I saw the trailer. It looked interesting. 
See, that's <laughs> that's my issue. I can't see anybody that's not a fan of the game can run into it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. I watched it because you asked me to in the notes, and I feel like if I didn't, you were going to be mad at me today. So I watched the first two episodes. Did nothing for me. I will say the first two episodes so far are really slow. I have seen all over the internet episode three, This is which is why I wanted to see episode three before I got here, but like I said, I just didn't have the time. I was I wanted to see episode three because all over the internet I kept seeing episode three is just amazing, and that's what gets it going. But we'll see. I also don't like the animation at all. I, ugh. I, I don't mind the animation, but I agree. It's not the best. I have seen way better. I just, you know, I mean, I, mean, I don't know if I'm, this is too hipster of me, but, like, in now generation, we've seen so many shows with different kind of animation. I always want to see something different. Like, I'm going to go get it. We'll probably get hate mail for this one, but uh, Iron Man Armored Adventures, I love that animation because it was something different I had never seen before. Yeah. So I want to see something more like that. Plus, I'm not into cartoons as much as I used to be. Yeah, I was never a huge anime lover that kind of style voice acting is really good I give that to show the voice acting is really really I, good I think it tries too hard to be funny sometimes within the two episodes I saw um, like the enthusiast uh, we were just funny <laughs> okay sorry don't you ever say that about <laughs> it but um speaking of anime uh, I just want to say that My Hero Academia season 2 started up again uh, it took a mid-season break and to, yesterday was it started up again. So it's a good show. So good. Yeah. If you haven't I, seen that, I I don't normally like anime, but I took your recommendation on that, and I really did like that show. Yeah, that was so good. You're so good. Uh, you know what? Let's just uh, get into. I think that's it for movie stuff. So let's get into games. Um, we're just going to go right down the list. Shadow of Mordor. Shadow of War. Um, so it looks like it's going to actually take your save from Shadow of Mordor as long as you use the uh, forge. Mm-hmm. Um, nemesis system that they just put in an update. Uh, what it will do is it'll take all your enemies that you've turned into your allies and all the enemies that still remember you and put them in the game if you haven't killed them in your Shadow of Mordor scene. So what do you think about that? I actually like it. Isn't it amazing? I, uh, this is what, like the third franchise to do this? Yeah. Because uh, Mass Effect, you could do that and transfer your save. And the original Knights of the Republic, all it did was transfer your history. It didn't actually change yes. anything in gameplay. But even then, when that happened, I was like, "What? Yeah. The game remembers the decisions I made." So I think that's really neat. I think that's an awesome idea. Ever play Shadow Mordor? I love Shadow Mordor. Game's really good. Um, you excited about Shadow War? I have been kind of paying attention to it. Did it get pushed back? It yes. did. It's October okay. now. Okay. It's supposed yeah. to be August. I'm gonna pick it up. Um, I thought that I was almost done Shadow of Mordor, and then I looked at like forty-four <laughs> percent. So apparently, I'm not almost done. Better finish it, man. I'm got some time to October. It. <laughs> well, the, like I said, the nice thing now is um, since you haven't beaten it, you actually have a pretty good advantage of going into the world and picking. You know, okay, yeah. who who do I want on my side for when this Mordor next game drops. comes out? Because I look, I actually loaded my save. Apparently, I just kill people because I only had two guys on the entire screen uh, no. that were my ally, and I was like, "That was my issue." I killed. <laughs> I was like, "I was like, man, I just chopped people's heads off." Huh? Yeah, I like that slow motion no, decapitation, and just that's what I. Did. And, and I love that their head has an expression on it after you cut off. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, and I look, and I'm like, man, I have like twelve guys on here that remember me. It's gonna be a tough Shadow of War. I will say this about Shadow of War: I feel like. It is doing a good job of what a game coming out should do. It's just giving me enough to keep me more and more interested. Like, everything they release about it, like, we're fixing the Nemesis system up. We're improving the graphics. Here's a little teaser about how you convince people to join your team. And now announcing this, you know what I mean? All it makes me want to do is go and add more money to my reserve for the game, you know? Yeah. Like, it's doing a good job of that. I are not uh, giving me too much that's, you know, ruining the experience for me. You're giving me just enough to keep me... Uh, yeah, it's really salivating over it. It's fantastic. Yeah, I agree. Um, I'm, and I, I like that they just gave fans a reason to go back to the old game. If you, you know, if you already beat Shadow of Mordor, all right, now you get to pick, like, you know, which guys you want to bring over to you. And it team. is smart. How many people do you think went out and bought this game again after hearing this? That's Probably quite smart. a few, yeah. yeah. Um, I don't have that problem. I'm going to go in there and just... 
Befriend everyone. Befriend. <laughs> I'm taking I'm a, everyone. I'm with a me. huge army. <laughs> as soon as the game starts, it's like your allies have come. It's just a wave of men. Because I always like killing the captains just to get like points and whatever. Yeah. Rank up. But now I had uh, I got buds. I had one captain that I really liked, and I really got mad because he died. <laughs> he used to carry spears on his back, and I was like, "Yeah, this guy's such a badass." I was like, "He's never going to die because he's like." Awesome! I worked him up to war chief. He was like one of the war chiefs, and I brought him on. A, I like I told him to go and get one of the other war chiefs. And uh, when I went there to help him out, he uh, no. he, he died. <laughs> that game can get you somewhere. Like I told you, I was single handedly killed by the same small level orb <laughs> so many times. He got promoted so many times, <laughs> and it wasn't like he earned it ever. Like I was hurt, and the first time he got me. And then I was literally fighting another captain when he came and stabbed me from behind. And he just kept getting promoted to a point where I was like, I spent days hunting him down. I was like, you're not getting this. I have to take you out. I need to take you out. Apparently in Shadow of War, and I thought this was pretty cool, um, you will now have orcs that remember you and will leave their war settlements to hunt you. Word. So if you're in another uh, orc area... An orc from a different zone may come over to try and kill you because of what you've done to him. Hmm. I remember seeing it in a, in one of the le- like uh, gameplay videos that they did. A guy you cut his arms and legs off. He had a mechanical arm and mechanical legs, and he was Word. and he was like he wanted his revenge. Um, he was really cool. your body parts. Darth Vader. That's right. It was really cool. Um, it's over, orc. I have the high ground. <laughs> <laughs> I <hate> you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was an Anakin reference. Uh, yeah, I yes, know. Yes, I, yes. I know. You underestimate my power. Yeah, yeah. Felt really bad for Anakin. <laughs> what a rough day. Yeah. Day. Do you know what I found out recently while you're looking at the next thing on the news? I already have it, but go on. A little fact for people. Um, they finished uh, Revenge of the Sith. They were showing it to a few test audiences, and somebody turned to George Lucas and was like, yeah, it looks pretty good. Um, how's Luke get his father's lightsaber? And George realized he never filmed Obi Wan picking it up, so he had to go back and you remember redo that whole scene just so they can film it picking the saber oh, up wow. and walking away with it. That's why I feel so detached when he turns around and grabs the saber. How do you forget to film that? <laughs> the one thing you need to make sure you put into that movie, you forgot to film. Good thing a fan actually said something. Like noticed it, yeah. Well, like. like- what if a fan never said anything? <laughs> it would have been like that. Would have been another thing that people tore apart about them prequels. Yeah, <laughs> look at the saber. Huh? Nobody picked it up. <laughs> George Lucas didn't even have the audacity to figure out his own. Sequence. I remember watching um, Phantom Menace and who was this Qui Gon Jinn? Yoda said that he trained Obi we won. This is bull. Like, <laughs> 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 oh, Jar Jar, I'm still mad at you. Um, so let's move on to Horizon. Uh, Zero Dawn. You never played it. Never. You don't <laughs> like people. You know, you, you, you're you sad. <laughs> well, there's DLC coming out for it, which we were all pretty excited for, except for Ryan, because Ryan hasn't played it, so he has no reason to be excited. It's okay. Oh, I'm so yeah, excited. <laughs> you haven't played these before? I do. And you've never played this? Explain to me right now. <laughs> it's, like, it's an amazing game. You, all right, let me simply say this. Hunter... Robots, animals. You're done. That's it. There's nothing much else to say. Right. It's, like, it's a great it's, game. It is a really good And the story is so... It's like an RPG? It takes place it, it in the future, so far into the future that humanity has forgotten that we were, like, dominant at one time and had skyscrapers, and uh, machines have taken over, and there's, like, actual machines that are, like, animals that keep the Earth going, that are, like... By Pollygate and stuff like yeah, that. Each one does a different job for the planet. But they all look like animals, whether it's giraffes or stuff like that. And you play as a hunter that goes around scavenging for parts in this huge wall store. It's a really good game. Huh. I can understand you missing it. It only sold well, got 10 out of 10s. Yeah, well, I mean. Did well, <laughs> review wise. Had a huge theme at 10 out of 10 is a little too shiesty for yeah. me. <laughs> See, <laughs> anything gets a 10 out of 10. Give it a 9.8 and I'll pick it up. 10 out of so 10. So you play Zelda? I don't trust like that. Oh, I just got my Switch this month, so oh, I haven't okay. played it yet, but I'm going to. You can't play it. It's 10 out of 10. Dang. You better go return I'm it. borrowing it. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Um, but before the DLC comes out, they released a patch, and the patch is going to include uh, New Game Plus, Ultra Hard Mode, and some cosmetic stuff for Aloy. Some war paint and stuff like that. I'm really confused by Ultra Hard Mode. That game wasn't easy. No, it was not like, easy. What are, what? 
what is it like impossible? Like, there is certain like um, when you go through to get the um, to learn how to hack like the bigger animals. Those machines you have to fight in the end, they're not easy. They're fun, but they're not easy. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't imagine playing that on an Archer hard mode. Like my least favorite machine that you had to fight in that game was the one that dug underground oh. and burrowed. Mm-hmm. Hated him. You know what's real funny? If you did what I did, rush the game and only have two allies when you go to fight that final boss, not a smart decision. Not a smart decision at all. It's like the Shadow of War discussion we just had. Yes. <laughs> when you do play it, which you should, um, make sure you do your side missions and recruit a lot of people. Because right. I ran through the game to catch up to him and then regret it. <laughs> and so did my wife, because she heard a lot of choice words coming out of my mouth. <laughs> Playing that game. <laughs> Speaking of your wife, real quick, did she hear last week's podcast? Did she comment on? Oh, she yet? was pissed. <laughs> yeah, she was real mad at me. <laughs> Trying to get her mad at you. She was pissed. <laughs> I was at work and I get a text. You suck. I'm like, why? And she's like, I just listened to your podcast. Still didn't really register my head. I was like, oh yeah, we said that word. I'm not gonna say it though. <laughs> not this time. Yeah, not this time. Hey Ryan, what's the opposite of dry? Oh, moist. All right. <laughs> I love you, honey. God. We're about to lose our biggest fan. Um, but yeah, I thought this was really cool. Once again, it's another thing that gives people a reason to go back to the game before the DLC. Really smart, too. Like, What do you think? you think you're going to go back, try New Game Plus or anything? I, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Plus, I want to see the new cosmetics. Plus, I'm getting them for the DLC anyway. But I think this is cool that they're doing a patch. I also feel like this, for games that should have a patch, this game didn't feel broken at all to get yeah. a patch. Yeah. It's really weird. Like, there's still games running around where I can, like, walk through walls and <laughs> fall out, and they never get a patch. <laughs> and it's, like, almost perfection. It's like, yeah, let's release a patch for this. Let's be fair to our fans. Let's, let's add stuff, though. Nothing, nothing needs to be fixed. Yeah. But let's make them happier. And I'm, I'm wondering, cosmetic-wise, like, war pigs and stuff, yeah. I'm really curious because it was a beautiful game too. Yeah, man. like water, the effects. I still have a screenshot saved on my phone of just a close up on her face, which yeah, yeah. was unbelievable. Well, that was another thing they put in, in the um, in the uh, don't hurt yourself patch not too long ago. They added that she can now while you're taking screenshots, you can change her emote. Like she can do different stances. Like she has a heart one where she holds her hands up and makes a heart. So now you can have her in different poses. I did love, the, I did photo, love mode. photo mode in that game uh, to the point where, like, if I show certain pictures I took in the game, people think I, like, ripped it from the internet. I'm like, no, I literally took that picture by playing it. Yeah. There's a photo mode in the game. Right, right. put them on snap. There it is. There it is. <laughs> except, you get, except you don't get points for it. Uh, a lot of games, a lot of Sony games, I'll say, have actually been doing that. I and really I like, do it. like it. Uncharted did it. Um... Now this one, I think they added it in God of War 3 when they yep. did the remaster for that. I think it's really cool because there are sometimes you just have those moments that you're like, man, I just really want to capture this in a picture. and it, It's perfect. It is. It is. And sometimes you have that moments where like you did something super amazing. I would wish I had it in Borderlands the other day because I crossed the gap in Borderlands. I saved the video. <laughs> I got to edit that. I still couldn't believe I made that jump. And it was like by the tip of my toes. Because I literally looked back and was like, what? I almost, almost fell off of that one. You can actually still make it a screenshot. What you would do is while you're editing the video, pause it wherever you want and just hit share again and then save the screenshot. Good, good. Do that already. Thanks for explaining. Oh, sorry. Weird. Yeah, that's all. All right, fine. Well, let's just move on. Uh, let's, let's get to some Overwatch news now. This is actually pretty exciting. Because um, I kind of was slowly falling off Overwatch. I Overwatch is getting a story finally. No. Oh. Um, but as. Fun of a game as it is, I kind of found myself being bored of the new heroes that were being announced. None of them really appealed to me personally. Um, Doomfist is someone who has been teased in Overwatch since the very first trailer. Um, Since the game was first announced, when you see those kids and they're looking in that uh, museum, Doomfist gloves there. He's the payload that you're escorting in one of the maps has Doomfist glove in it. And now he's finally a hero. Uh, He's on the PTR right now for PC and have you seen anything on him yet? I haven't or? seen anything on him yet. Have you, you, I've heard okay. that he's coming. He's yeah. the black guy. He is. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the black guy. He's the black guy. Yes. Uh, there's, there's a running joke on this podcast. If you can play as a black guy in the game, I will pick him. <laughs> that's, well, well, that's who I pick. Yeah, Doomfist is really cool. He's a really cool attack character. So his um, basic shot is uh, he has a small like holes on his knuckles, and it shoots six bullets. So it's kind of like a mini shotgun. 
Um, it shoots six shots, and you get four shots each time. It automatically will reload. You don't have to reload it. Um, he has his his alternate fire is a slam for his fist, and what it does is it kind of bounces a person. Mm-hmm. It doesn't stop any attack that they're currently doing or anything like that. It slows them. Okay. Um, then he has his uppercut, which launches them into the air, and then he has a charging fist that he can do where he just rams into you, and when he hits you, you get stunned, but you also get pushed back. If you get pushed back into a wall, you take additional damage. So all this stuff really combos really well together. I found myself really like ground pounding someone to slow them, uppercutting them, and then wall in the air. Oh, so he's already playable right now. Only in the um, PC right now. Um, people are thinking next week though he's going to be out. All all characters for Overwatch are free too, so it's not something you have to pay for. He's just we're out. We're, does the <laughs> does the shotgun fists play like Genji's? Ninja Stars, that kind of thing? Kind of, unfortunately. Okay. I will say his fire is probably one of the worst in the game. Okay. It really You feel sucks. like he's too overpowerful? No, I do not. You feel like people are going to be playing as with Spade and all that? Uh, that's always happened whenever a new hero comes out. People race to play him. I actually think I'm going to be one of those people. His ult is actually a, a meteor strike. He jumps into the air and just pounds down. Um, and you see three rings. If you're in the smallest ring in the center, you take the most damage, and the damage will decrease as it goes out. But I think I think he's just a really fun character. Um, he also gains shield for every time you use one of his abilities, and it hits an enemy. If he hits an enemy, he gains 30 shield every for every time an enemy is hit oh, with wow. his ability. So the more people you hit in your ability, you're getting 30 on top of each one. I don't think he's overpowered because he's very in-your-face. He's not a character that can sit back and deal that much damage. For me to deal the damage to you, I have to come to you. He, there is no... And his only gap closer is his uh, rocket punch that lun- lunges him forward. So, and I highly... Lunging's a good word. People don't use it enough. <laughs> and I highly doubt more people are really going to use that as an opener than something to finish a fight. You know what they should do? At a story mode. I mean, it's not that difficult. Like, why? All the story is on YouTube. There is a huge story. Oh, <laughs> oh there's a story on YouTube. That makes it okay. Gotcha. <laughs> I apologize. All right, let me call Blizzard up right now. I apologize. <laughs> this is on this story. This is a six-hour campaign. I'd pick it up. Well, they uh, that's why they have the like the missions that drop every once in a while. They they do have the um in the arcade. They have like these events that happen that give you a story, like a Franken junk rats uh, thing for for Halloween, where he was basically the doctor of Frankenstein, and did all that. I like it. I don't trust like that. <laughs> I don't trust the fact that this game does so well. And there's no story mode. So do we think that? Because it that sounds, good? it sounds to me like he is a kind of a mix of other characters. Is it Reinhardt who has Reinhardt like has lunging? Reinhardt has the uh, jetpack for right. it, but his is a push, and it, it, well, okay, it's a push for anyone except the first person it hits. Mm-hmm. If he hits them directly, I'm sure you know you've probably been bashing plenty oh, yes. walls as well. <laughs> Yeah, it's had it happen to me a few times. Um, however, um, Doomfist beats Reinhardt. Okay. If you if a Reinhardt's charging at you, you're Doomfist. If you rocket punch Reinhardt, you beat his push. Okay. So Doomfist is technically the strongest character in the game when it comes to strength. He does beat a majority of things when it comes to him versus other things. Um, Zarya, while her bubble is up, she cannot be pushed or anything. If you rocket punch Zarya while her bubble is up, she is still pushed. The only character that can push her now with her bubble is Doomfist, but she will not take damage. So the bubble is still doing its job, but... So with that kind of mechanic, would him rocket punching, say, if D.Va threw her mech... He beats, it... he beats the mech. Okay. The mech would still... Uh, if she throws her mech and is doing its ult, all he would do is push it back. The mech's still going to explode. Okay. Just like Reinhardt, you can, you know, Reinhardt charge Diva's mech to get okay. it away. Um, so that's all it's going to do. It's not going to destroy the mech yeah. and the mech doesn't go off. Okay. Um, it, there is a bug right now where he's also breaking Junkrat's trap. That's not tr- what's supposed to happen. If he rocket punches into a Junkrat's trap, he's supposed to get trapped. Supposed to get trapped? Yeah, it's not supposed to break the trap. Um, but I think he's a really cool character and he's a lot of fun. I think he's something Overwatch needed. A lot of people think it's not what Overwatch needed. I hear people online saying, we don't need more attack characters, we need different supports, yeah. and, and more tank characters, which I agree with the tank one, especially. I don't think I don't think we've had any tank 
DLC characters yet to the game. I don't think so. To my knowledge. Was Sombra a DLC character? Sombra was, but she was, um, she's the hacker, so she's yeah, an attack. I could never really get a hold of her. I didn't really like her, and I'm not an Ana fan either, no. the, the healer. Which, don't get me wrong, I like her heals, but I'm just, I think someone a little, I think we need someone else for the healing position in Ana. Yeah. If, I do, if I do healing, I usually do Zenyatta. Yeah. Just because, I mean, there's like... I mean, he's super powerful, too. His attacks are super really powerful, good. but you can actually heal at the same time. I never liked strict healing. Uh, my healer, my go-to healer is Mercy, personally. Yeah. Um, I yeah. feel like she's more strict healer. Like, her damage isn't really she great. Is. I, her like healing's great. Yeah. Borderlands good. You can shoot people. I love Borderlands. All right, so good. <laughs> All right. God, I was drowning over here. <laughs> I, I've never played Overwatch. Never watched a video on it. <laughs> Well, um, we'll, we'll move on good from Good thing Overwatch. Ryan was here. Yeah. If he wasn't, it would have been just you talking for 15 minutes <laughs> and me sitting here looking confused. Well, here's a, uh, we'll, we'll move on from Overwatch then. But uh, I just want to say, if you have a chance, anyone who hasn't seen the animated trailer, they released an animated trailer for Doomfist. I highly recommend you check that out. It, it was actually really cool. And uh, when we're done, I'll play it for you because I think you would really enjoy it. Mm, probably not. I'm just like that. I think you would. Maybe um, there's a story. Oh, so, man. I posted it on our Facebook page, the new Monster Hunter gameplay that had English. I did watch it. You did? Mm-hmm. did you, have you seen this yet? No. I no. Haven't. Do you like Monster Hunter? I played a little bit on... I think it was Wii U? Yes. They did release yeah. one on the Wii U. Yeah, I think I played that, that one. That one was bit. terribly good. Okay. It was good, but it was terrible. All right. That stupid egg mission, man. I can't get over it. I yeah, just, I didn't get too, too far. If, if, if you've never played a Monster Hunter game, that is a terrible one to start off with. Just because how boring and repetitive that one can be. I heard Try on 3DS is good. Yes. Okay. Um, this new one coming out, I feel like this is good for n- and people that just never experienced Monster Hunter. Especially yeah. the English trailer, I feel like people that never played this would be interested in this. Just because I think it's got that range that it's... And it just looks different from any other monster hunter, in my it, opinion. It, do, it looks beautiful, first off. You're beautiful. Um, this was the first time we saw full 1080p gameplay, and it was gorgeous. Um, but we also got some more information. We got the same setting. You're hunting the same monster. Okay. But what we did see that was new is, one, it's they showed off single player, because uh, before it was always co-op. You still get your cat friend with you, which I thought was pretty cool. Yeah. They showed off the armor, crafting. Um, you get to see that there's more gear, and that looked really cool. You got to see all the different weapons, and that there are effects to these weapons now, which I thought was also really cool. Uh, and you got to dress your cat up. Yeah. Only thing I'm really worried, and I want to know your opinion, I feel like Monster Hunter was exclusive on Nintendo for a long time, because it's never done well on its sales like it should. Well, it originally was on PlayStation 2, and, and it was on PSP. European. And then it did for a long time now was exclusive to Nintendo. But I've always heard this because it didn't do fare well in any other system but Nintendo. I think it didn't fare well because Nintendo owns the handheld market. Because let's be honest, it only really did well on 3DS because it's just one of those games that I think people really enjoy. It, it does really big in Japan because of the commutes in Japan. A lot of people use the subway in Japan, so you know a lot of people play games while they're on the subway. Mm, subway. Eat fresh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was so weird. <laughs> but uh, I do think that them bringing it to PlayStation, I think they've realized one PlayStation has such a large um, unit sold. God, I could not think of the actual word I wanted to say there. Uh, install base. There's there's such a large amount of people that have a PS4 that they were like, you know what? If we put it on the PS4, and let's say only ten million buy this game, that's even more than what usually buys. I'm, I'm just worried it's not going to do well. I know I'm going to get it, because I it. like the Monster Hunter series. This looks amazing. I know you like it. What about you? Would you pick it up first day, or would you wait? I won't get it first day. Yeah, and that's, that's what I'm worried about, even though it looks really... But he also hasn't seen the gameplay or anything yet. I haven't. Mm-hmm. So, I think that that trailer, the way that they're, they're, they're really showing it off and marketing it, and you even said it too, when we first saw that gameplay after our E3... Um, live reaction. Mm. You said this is this Come is check that video out. It's definitely going to be a way. 
for people to that don't like Monster Hunter to get into it. I do, and I hope a lot of people play this because it looks like something that could start off as an amazing <laughs> franchise yeah. on other things besides Nintendo. As much as I'm a Nintendo fanboy, I want to see Monster Hunter on more than just a Nintendo system. Monster Hunter is a game that I want to see do well because I really like that series. I don't want to see it just die out. Yeah, and it, it makes me worry. It was like when, um, because people have been requesting Monster Hunter forever on other things. Yes. But it, it makes me worried, like Scott Pilgrim, where everybody was like, oh, I want to see this movie. I want to go see this movie. It got released. Nobody saw the movie. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it makes me worry that's going to happen again. But nice. you hear me, enthusiast fans? Buy this game when it comes out. Is well, that 23 of you. going to be released on Switch at any point? Is there any? I don't know. No. They're, they, they're, we were supposedly getting uh, the one they released for the DS, mm-hmm. but now that's exclusively coming out in Japan. Yeah. So I think eventually we'll get a release in um, the U.S., but we'll see. With the Montana World, I don't see that running on the Switch. Much as I love the Switch, the game looks ridiculous. Just watch the gameplay video. All right. Yeah. You can see the veins on a leaf. It's ridiculous. It looks amazing. Yeah. Hmm. Um, I don't think it's going to go to the Switch, and um, I, I think that's because they don't want to. They don't want to take away from what it is right now. A lot of people are talking about how beautiful the game is, and it's seamless. Before in Monster Hunter, every time you went to a new yeah. zone, it had to load every single time. This time, the whole area is just open. You don't have to worry about those load screens. Not saying the Switch couldn't do it. I don't personally think it could, though, because there are other games that aren't as intense as Monster Hunter that also aren't going to the Switch because developers have said it's underpowered. And in my opinion, if those games can't get there, I don't see Monster Hunter getting there. Okay. I do think what they're going to do with Monster Hunter is, because they do do spinoffs, like Cross and Double Cross. Those are spinoffs. Those aren't direct Monster Hunter games. Um, spinoffs. World is going to be My five. Favorite matters. Uh, World World is going to be Monster Hunter Five. It's going to be a direct Monster Hunter game. I think the Switch is going to be where the spinoffs are probably going to live and go. Like Monster Hunter in the Hood, Monster Hunter in Space, Monster <laughs> Hunter Steve Urkel edition. There it is. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. I like that. See, I Urkel made Hunter. I made references to the Leprechaun franchise. <laughs> I don't know where you came with this Family Matters reference out of nowhere. But I guess because Family Matters is a spinoff. I like that. That's good. Um, well, from here on out, it's time to get into our Nintendo news because there's actually quite a bit. There is a lot of Nintendo news that you typed up. Yeah. First off, I just want to personally attack Mike Dog on that uh, attack he did on Nintendo the other day <laughs> on Facebook. Um, son, we, we boys know, but... Uh, Stay away from me for a while, because you're food, all right? I don't like the words you said about Nintendo. So let you know that. I, I, talk. I'm not going to I'm not gonna sit here and uh, pretend. I actually kind of agree with that. I know you did. Yeah. You see, I saw that you liked it. Yeah. I was pissed at you. I'm sorry. I busted into my wife and said, you see what Zabo did? Huh? You like the stupid post. <laughs> so. I, I'm sorry. I, I just, you know, it's just how I feel. And I'm sorry. I get so defensive over my it, Nintendo. It's okay. You can, you know, we all have our things that we... Stand so for life. We'll start with a little bit of bad news with Nintendo, and then we'll just go into, I guess, the good. Um, good. A game called Plague Tale um, Innocence um, will not be coming to the Switch. Devs were asked why. They said the system is just too underpowered. They, they can't seem to figure out a way to get it to run on the Switch. Um, what? We, we've been hearing this more and more every I mean, time. Even before we heard developers say this, when we heard that it was going to be a hybrid, yeah. we figured this was going to happen. You know, the same thing happened with the Wii. When you take a step out of the norm and develop something, which Nintendo loves to do, you're going to have to cut corners somewhere. Yeah. So we knew once it was going to be a hybrid that certain games were just not going to run now, this thing. We got Cars 3, though. Yeah, yeah we did. And, and the Lego games. <laughs> and the Lego games. Um, but now we've been talking about Doom and Gloom for third party for a while now, and I'm pretty sure at this point we we can come to the conclusion that Nintendo's not going to get it. I don't I don't see them getting it next year, no matter how much, many consoles they sell. I don't think it's going to matter because, to be honest, a majority of gamers, as much as you and I don't fall into this category, and I don't know if Ryan does, graphics aren't everything to us, but a majority it is. When people look at games, what do they say? Oh man, what does it look better on? Oh man. Why do you think graphic comparison videos are so popular? They are very popular and easy to do. Yeah. Huh. Do you know what I mean? Like, well, yeah, to me, definitely graphics aren't everything because, I mean, when I saw when I saw the gameplay footage for Yoshi, I got so happy. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> I got so I happy. <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> it brought me back to being like 10 years old, and I just wanted to sit there and just eat stuff and fly around. And that's all I wanted to do. Man, I don't I care do. what the graphics look like. I don't care. Once again, I feel like on Nintendo, what they really need to focus on, I've said this a thousand times, you're obviously not going to get these third-party developers' mainstream games, but you can get side games, at least. And that's what they need to go for. That's what I was going to say. I think what they really need to focus on is not getting the um, Wolfensteins, not getting the Evil Withins, but working with third party to get kind of what Sony does, third party exclusives. Like yeah. the Mario Rabbids, I think, is really smart. Um, as much as I don't think a lot of people are, it's going to appeal to a lot of people. Because while some people do like Mario, I don't think everyone that likes Mario, the reason they like Mario is because of the strategy. You know, I think they use it for the, the platforming. And but I, I can see your point, because I know my wife, because the rabbits are in the game, and she's seen commercials and stuff with the rabbits for she's really excited for it, because it's something different. But I agree with you. But the way my mind works is, obviously, Nintendo, you're not getting Red Dead Redemption 2. You know what I mean? But at least get something, you know what I mean, in that universe would be cool. I think um, what they need to do, yeah, is make sure that they're getting these smaller things, even if it's not the full big title. Don't get me wrong. The conversation then is going to be, well, why have a Switch? You're getting lesser version of games. They're not, you know, you're not even getting the right things. Right. I do think that Nintendo needs to make sure that that's not the conversation. They need to make sure that those third exclusives, even if they aren't the core game, are just as interesting as the core I'm game. I'm going to take it back to when... Um, Final Fantasy was coming out on PlayStation 2, Final Fantasy 10, and GameCube was nowhere near going to get Final Fantasy 10. But instead, they got Final Fantasy Crystals. Yes. That was a nice side game. I really enjoyed that game, and it was a separate story, but it was still in that same universe. So, something like that, I'd be happy with. Final Fantasy is that game with like 40,000 sequels. So, got it. Yeah. It's pretty popular. They're on what, 15 now? Yes. 15 just core, core. Yeah, just, core <laughs> just core titles. Yeah. <laughs> let's not let's not get into yeah. all the side stuff and tactics. And I actually wanted to, I actually wanted to play that one because it's an MMO, right? I uh, 15 is not an MMO. Which one is an MMO? That is 14. 14. 14 is really good as an MMO. I think okay. 15 though you would love because 15 was just super good. 15 yeah. was really good as well. Was it a 10 out of 10? It was not a 10 yeah. out of 10. Well, then I get it. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> you might leave with it today. But <laughs> <laughs> um. But yeah, so I, I, I agree 100%. I think one thing they also need to be careful with is how much they market out their own characters. Right. Um, I know a lot of people, while the Mario Rabbits thing is interesting, some people are saying, it's another Mario game. You know, why not just make something new? Because that is something that Nintendo's lacking in. It's new IPs. They've come out with two, and Lord only knows how long, ARMS and Splatoon, which that's awesome. But let's be honest, they're still using the same things, whereas... Sony has come up with more than 10 new IPs in the past 10 years. I agree, but I'm going to go back to the whole idea. If it's working for you, if it's okay, it ain't broke, don't fix it, man. You know, and then the day, Mario sells. Well, I'll say I sell. agree with you. Well, Mario sells. Hold on. I, while I agree with you, let's, let's also look back at, let's look at the Wii. The Wii was one of the, is the best-selling system that Nintendo has ever put out. Right? No argument there. Correct. Yeah. Yet, so when you look like when you look at their sales for their games, which we're going to look at in a little bit for one of them, the games didn't sell on it. So clearly, Mario isn't what sold that system. It was we sports. It was we sports? And while I get what you're saying that you know Mario, Zelda, they sell systems. Look at the Switch. Switch did really well so far because I really do say Zelda did a lot of that success for it. I don't think that those those games had the same pull as a Call of Duty. You, you, you know what I mean? While Zelda is really cool to us, there's a large people, a large group of people that just only get Call of Duty and Madden. I, 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 and I think, I think that number is larger than the people that get... Even Uncharted is smaller to that number. You know, I'm not, not just attacking you know, Nintendo here. I'm just saying I think rather than sticking with your first parties, you need to come up with new stuff, which I think Xenoblade is great. The, the fact that they own a really good RPG that's just theirs, I think that's smart. Granted, that's not Nintendo. It's a different company making it. But it's good that they have an RPG that people who like RPGs like myself, I have to RPGs have a Switch. Game. Got it. I have to have a Switch to get that. At the same time, though, in, in just agree with me not. If you sat down and did a list of 20 greatest games of all time... How many Nintendo first-party games are going to be on that list? 
I would say mostly Mario. I don't think anything else would be up there. I looked at sales numbers for Zelda. I'm not saying sales wise. I'm talking about just review wise. Yeah. If we're going review wise, sure, but that's not what matters, though. Let's be honest. The what keeps us, our company going are sales. Look at um, Nier. Before the second Nier, the original Nier was really good review wise. No one bought it. Alan Wake, really great game. It was. No one bought it. It doesn't matter if you're a good game and how well your reviews are. What matters is that people buy your game. Unfortunately, you, you buy Call of Duty every year, but I think Call of Duty has kind of gone down a slippery slope of it hasn't been good in yeah, a long time. I was going to say the same thing. I think that there are always going to be those people who just buy the new 2K this year of sports game or Call of Duty such and such. Or and wrestling. Yeah. Or, Brother. Yeah. <laughs> billions of copies sold. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, I, I'm always... That always leaves a bad taste in my mouth because the same kind of thing is like iPhones. iPhones. You're getting a new iPhone every year. I don't get out. Calm down, buddy. <laughs> You're going to get a new iPhone every year, but they're not always different enough to Just warrant buy. buying another yeah. one. No, I agree with that. And but, that's the same thing with, like, in my opinion, Mario. Yeah. You know, and you can argue that with Uncharted. You can argue it with anything, honestly. The reason why I think most people kind of get hung up on game, Nintendo games are these are games that you've had since the NES. Well, I think that's the, a big problem, though, is Nintendo's own curse. Yeah, they can focus on making new IPs, but if you scream Nintendo at somebody, first thing that they're going to pop in their head is Mario. You I know agree. what I mean? And it's something that they're comfortable with, something that knows sells decently enough they're going to stick with. I think that they could just, the things that they could do to these franchises are kind of reinvent them. Breath of the Wild is a very good example of that. It honestly has a, it's the original Zelda, much prettier, more open. It works really well. My only complaint w- with it really was the lack of temples because I really like to have an objective, whereas Breath of the Wild kind of just throws you in. and yep. You had those small objectives, but it wasn't enough, in my opinion, to really... You can technically finish that game in 15 minutes, what yeah. is it? Yeah, someone if had to speed run, run yeah. right if you ran right, If you run right to Ganon's Castle, yeah. So, I mean... Spoiler alert. The story is the bagger at the end. Got it. Every Zelda game. Every Zelda game. But like, that's, that's something that I mean. Like, if they would have done what, what Breath of the Wild did, but also changed the story up, I think that that would have made a much larger impact on me than having Ganon once again. Same thing with Mario. Like, Odyssey, I do think Odyssey is doing interesting things. I may not agree with it, but I can see why some people are excited for it. I am. Um... But I I do think they need to stray away from Bowser always being the bad guy. Bowser, what is he doing? Kidnapping Peach again? Okay, yeah, but well, how many times do I have to say this woman before she just decides to lock herself yeah, in? But any time they do something different, people like M Dog complain that they're throwing in their licensed characters. At the end of the day, Mario RPG is a different kind of Mario game where Bowser's not the villain. I actually Mario RPG is actually one of my favorite Mario. Okay, games. or and don't get me wrong, maybe I'm in the minority here, and that's why they don't do it. And that's we'll get into that soon too with Metroid. That's what I wanted to really talk about. You're Metroid. Thanks, um, but. Uh, maybe it's that the smaller games that aren't really like typical Mario just don't sell as well. Like Mario RPG, as much as I love it, we didn't get another one until basically Paper Mario on the N64, and even that wasn't even close to the same. The same I'd say thing. the closest to it was uh, Paper Mario on the GameCube, Thousand Year Door, was yeah. the closest we got to Mario RPG. Yeah. But it's the, the, the argument that I just don't necessarily agree with, that, you know, people who like to bash Nintendo say, oh, all you ever do is Mario, but at least there's Paper Mario, Mario 3D World, Mario Sunshine, Mario Odyssey. I mean, there's no, the objective yeah. is the same, but what is not the same in a Call of Duty game? I agree with that, but what I... I will say that Nintendo is the master of reinventing, reinventing games and gameplay. And when you think of... If there's any company that I think of pure gameplay, Nintendo is number one. Right. If I ever think of a game that I have a lot of fun playing, Nintendo's it. But when it comes to a game that captivates me in a story sense, Nintendo is not in it. That's Sony all the way. It is Sony, and that's what I want. I, and maybe that's that's the problem with me. I'm not. I don't really care so much about gameplay as much as I do a story. Like to me, it's story first, then gameplay, and that might be why Nintendo isn't on the pedestal it used to be for me. Because when I was a kid, all I cared about was Mega Man. Yeah. You know, he's a fighting robot. Got it. I used to, and Mega Man doesn't have a good story. You know. Well, what, I mean, what also excites me and thinks that maybe with the Switch we'll be going in a different slash better way is because of the new main charge Nintendo 
Yeah. Is taking it in a different direction. I mean, he's more... Hopefully. He's, he's not, like, as set in his ways, though they may be wrong, as, you know, you head right. of the Wii U, but... <laughs> Sir. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why? <laughs> Nobody liked the Wii U. The Wii U didn't even like itself. Um, we'll get back to... Let's continue with Nintendo news, though. Um, Nintendo's... Well, you know, let's get with Splatoon 2 first. Um, they did a Nintendo Direct yes. on just Splatoon. Did you see it? Yes. Did you see it? I did. Okay. Um, so they showed off all the DLC. They, well, they talked about the DLC, but they showed off the game, the gear, the game modes. I personally actually was getting extremely tired of that video. <laughs> oh, wow. Only because <laughs> I, I, I get why they did it the direction they did, because more kids probably watched it, but I kind of felt like someone was holding my hand, like, hey, here's the gear, here's how gear works, <laughs> oh, okay. hold on, here's the paint guns, here's how they work. I was like, I get it, I played the first one. Can you just show me things? But did they do a direct like this when the first one came out? I Honestly, I don't remember, because if they didn't, then I guess it would be a good idea to... And not to mention, as much and as... And it came out on the Wii U, so... Yeah, right. that's, <laughs> that's, that's I exactly what that sense. Where me and you <laughs> both played it, played Splatoon... I, nobody bought that. A game, lot of right? people I know. I know people that work for Nintendo directly that didn't buy the Wii U. Right? <laughs> a lot of people I know saw Splatoon and was like, "Wow, I really want to try that game." Not buying a Wii U for it. And I agree that I do think that Splatoon Two is really smart because Splatoon One sold really well, even though it was on a Wii U. Yeah. It still did really well as a as a first time IP. I think it sold over a million in its first week. Like, that's crazy. Yeah. It was definitely word of mouth because the sales, if you look at it, drastically went up. Yeah. And it was just people saying, wow, this is actually a solid shooter. And I, I really enjoyed it. You know, I'm not going to I'm not gonna sit here and be like, oh, it was fun. But, no, it was it was fun. I really enjoyed the game. Um, I like what I'm seeing for 2. I think it's – I don't feel like they added enough to 2 personally when I was watching to make it feel like an actual full sequel. It kind of just feels like they took the stuff from one and were like, all right, here's some more maps and stuff. I think if they... It's okay, though, because, like we just said, not enough people played the That's first why track. I think they did it. It's I think if they, if they just re-released one with the new control... Which is legitimately what I thought yeah. this one was going to be. I think that's as what long it as they did like. it with the, with the matchmaking like they're going to have, I would still buy it again. Yeah, I think, honestly, when we get Splatoon 3, that's, that's when we're going to see yes. the true... Well, sequel. that was going to what I was going to say. If when Splatoon three comes out, it feels like this again. I probably won't buy it. I'm, I'm not going to lie. I, I don't. I do. Like I said, the only and I feel like a lot and a lot of people are complaining that a lot of what's on the Switch is re releases of the Wii U stuff. I also feel like not enough people play the Wii U stuff for them to feel like you know what. I guarantee we can pass this off to people again. Gonna... I, I agree with that, and I actually like that they're re-releasing Wii U stuff. Before that reason, there are some games that I personally didn't even play on the Wii U, and I owned a Wii U. Mm-hmm. My problem with it is the price. I, think, I agree with I that. Do the fact think, that they're coming out for fifty and sixty dollars is ridiculous. I do think that these games coming out for sixty bucks, even Mario, even Mario Kart Eight, I bought it at sixty. I still don't think it was worth sixty. I agree with the stuff they added. That. It's great. But I feel like it kind of was almost a slap in the face to me that that game once stayed 60 the whole life of the Wii U. Never yeah. once dropped down. That's a Mario game. And you're yeah. releasing it again. Not going to be a new Mario Kart. You added a couple game modes and I think it was three, or, three or four drivers. No new maps. No new cups. No. Nope. But you want me to pay 60 again. I did it. I mean, <laughs> Don't get me wrong. I honestly and think maybe that's just, I'm part of the problem. Yeah. I thought there were new maps. No, no new, new maps, maps were added. New maps. Right. All they had, Only they had the battle, battle mode. mode and the new characters. I honestly think just 20 off a $40 price tag would have been that perfect. That's what I feel like. I think I think 40 for Mario Kart would have been perfect. I think 40 for LEGO City Undercover. Perfect. I do not understand why Lego City's 60. I don't understand why Mario Kart's 60. You mean Grand Theft Lego? Yeah, I don't understand. This, this guy, as much as I love this guy, F5, I probably would have bought it again on my Switch if it was 40. I refuse to pay 60 for it again when I have the whole game and all the DLC on my PS4. I didn't buy it. Didn't buy it. Mm-hmm. Oh, if you like Final Fantasy Tactics like games, I don't. This guy is really good. Never played. It's like playing chess. Yeah, it is. Like certain characters have certain abilities mm-hmm. and stuff, and you. The, the map's grid, so they can only move a certain number of spaces. Tactics. Tactics. Yeah. It is. Yeah. So while we're on some two news, um, Nintendo is releasing their smartphone app soon. God. Okay, so I'm a Nintendo fanboy, and I can agree that this is really stupid, man. I, I really hate the, hate this thing. 
I don't understand why you have to use your. I okay. I should say I, I understand because it's it's battery life. Let's be honest. If the switch had to power my headset and do all this other stuff, it would drain the battery even more. Which let's be honest. The Switch already kind of has a battery issue when people talk about the Switch. It's like, yeah. oh, it's a portable. It's not really a portable. It's a home console that you can just take on the go with right. you. And I think a lot of people forget that. So to a lot of people, and I've gotten into arguments with people, they're like, it's a handheld. It's not a handheld. It isn't. And it's been proven now that people use it in just handheld mode. It shortens life of the system. Yeah. Like the battery starts shorting up on it. It's meant to be, uh, to me, it's meant to be a console at home that you can take on the go with you. Yeah. But my issue with this is I'm confused on who they're presenting this smartphone app to. Because what kids can't use it unless that's, they have a phone. That's what I'm saying. If Nintendo is such a family base, and this is why they're doing like an app on a phone versus actual online you know, game presence, what kid has a cell phone? And I'm not going to – well, I know quite a few kids. I can't I agree do, with that. But, but my son isn't going to have one yes. at, anytime soon. Even when he's like going to school, I am not going to trust my kid with a cell phone. And, and I'm not going to trust them with my smartphone. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. So that's my issue. Yeah. I can understand giving a kid a cell phone. Like a flip phone. A flip phone. Yeah. All right, that, I can understand that. But By the a minute. smartphone? Like, what are, what are they going to do with that? Like, just really sit back and think about this, Ryan. Nintendo said the way you chat with your friends on the game is through our app and the phone. It's, it's, a, it's a phone. It's a phone. <laughs> I can pick it up and call you. And you can only talk <laughs> to people on your friends list. So <laughs> it's not going to be just random people. It's not going to be like when I'm on Call of Duty, if I'm not in a party chat, I can just hear people who also are in a party chat. It's only people that are on your friends list that you can even speak with. I think it might just be that Nintendo is so family-oriented that they're like, well, there's too many predators out there. So, <laughs> but, but I'm like, those kids are playing Minecraft on PS4 with a 40-year-old. But, yeah. but you know what? My argument to that, too, is let me be the parent. Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't need you to be the parent. And I'm an adult. Let me decide who I want to talk to or who I want my kid to talk to. Right. I, I completely respect and I think it's really smart that Nintendo is very family-oriented. I like that about them. I do not – like I have the app on my phone already even though I'm not going to need it for Lord only knows how many years so that I can set timers for my Switch for my son if I ever need to. You know what I mean? Be like, oh, you're not going to play that long. Here, once you're done, it's going in sleep mode, bud, and you're going to bed. Or, oh, it's adorable. It's not but, born yet. But like, you know, things like that I really like. It's adorable is you let his kid play Switch. My kids aren't a lot of touch <laughs> Yeah. My I kid, gave them the Wii U. <laughs> my, son's, my son's not going to touch the PS4. <laughs> We have a GameCube in the house. He might, he might play that. <laughs> but, um, you know, I don't... I like that they do that. I just don't like the whole... If you're an adult, you're still treated as a kid. It is really weird. And it's one of the reasons why I like Breath of the Wild. And there's our fourth member. <laughs> one of the reasons I like Breath of the Wild is Nintendo does do that thing where they hold your hand for a while on a lot of games. Breath of the Wild was like first in a while where they're like, good luck, you're going to die a lot. Enjoy yourself. Yeah. So, but yeah, the phone thing. As much as I'm a Nintendo fanboy, I can't, I can't fight and defend that. I still think it's the, the dumbest thing in the world. I don't think it's very smart one that it's a phone app. One, I can use my phone to call my friends because I can that's, only talk to my that's friends. That's the weirdest thing. Do we do we think that eventually they'll make the app available on the system itself? Because it is a tablet. I mean, I don't know. Um, like I said, the problem the problem people are having. One, there is no party chat. <laughs> So there's no cross game chat. If I'm playing Zelda, I can't just talk to you. Well, I can talk to you because it's a phone. But <laughs> well, um, let me get on the app so I just call. <laughs> I want to play Zelda, but uh, you want to get on Skype on my phone, or you know, just call each other. Um, but yeah, like it's just you, there is no cross chat, so I can't use the app to talk to you if I'm going to play Zelda. If you're on Splatoon. Uh, which I think is weird because it's an app. I don't know why yeah. the app would register, you know, be like, hey, you're not on Splatoon. You and maybe that's a change that they'll make later, but it I'm hoping. Just probably should have been one. I'm also one. hoping that the backlash that Nintendo hears from this, and I hope it gets enough, they'll start fixing their problems like Microsoft did when they announced the I don't Xbox. Know. One. See, the problem I have with Nintendo fanboys, and I'm not, you know what, let me not say Nintendo fanboys, but like, the vocal extreme yeah, Nintendo fanboys. The Nintendo extremists is what I'll say. Is they view Nintendo as they could do no wrong. I do see people defending this and actually talking about it like it's a good thing. And I'm like, I'm all for you know protecting your kids. I get it. I think there's better ways to do that with parental settings than to just sit there and be like, all right, 
your kids aren't going to do it, but you're not going to do it either. It's like, oh, come on. Like, yeah. uh, one of my favorite things when I had an Xbox One was literally making friends across the country. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I had a friend in California. I never met him, but we used to get on every day. We used to play Gears of War every day. It was a lot of fun. And now, ever since Party Chat, which is one of the reasons I hate Party Chat too, that's not a thing that I can do anymore. Everyone's in Party Chats. I don't make new friends. It's just people I already know in person. And I think that that's what, that, that's what the internet should be for. You know, spreading out to the world and being able to make friends and not have everyone be like, oh, I'm not talking to you. You're not my neighbor. Yeah. Well, we can still be friends. We really talk to our neighbors in it. But I also feel like Nintendo's always been really weird when it comes to, like, just treating everybody like you can. I'm going to use the Wii U, for example. Wii U had that huge um, online community where you could share news and games and stuff like that. Saw a lot of dicks. All right? And, um, yeah, you did. And, um, one of the saddest moments of my wife's life probably is I got an argument with probably a seven-year-old on there. I don't know. You know what I mean? About a game. <laughs> And every day I'd get home from work, I'd get so excited to, like, insult this kid. And you know what I mean? And I, it was still Nintendo. I was very respectful. I never cursed. I never said anything too mean. I'd always be like, go to bed, buddy. Isn't it past your bedtime? Stuff like that. <laughs> After five or six messages, Nintendo sends me this real threatening message like, you stop this. Or we're going to kick you off of this online service. This is not what it's meant for. And I'm like, really? Are you pleased to me that bad that I told the kid to go to bed? I'm like, no. We're not doing You do that. not tell him his bedtime. His parents <laughs> Dude, do. Like, or we do, do because we're Nintendo. Nintendo exactly. <laughs> I feel like, all right, that's fine. You, you want to stop bullying a lot. That's okay. At the end of the day, I'm an adult. That's ridiculous that I can't have an argument or discussion with somebody online. Is it going to be the same way if I get on, you get on uh, Nintendo and you make, oh, not even. When they released um, Mario vs. Sonic at the Olympic Games, and I went on and bashed that game and talked about how much I didn't like it. They flagged me for that comment, too. Once again, no curse words, nothing. I was talking bad about a game. I feel like that that's when you're going too far. And too, you, you should know, be able to avoid your, your opinion. They're like, whoa, this is first party. This is, <laughs> whoa, whoa, wait a minute. No, 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 no. Wait, 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 wait. And, like, don't get me wrong, too. Like, It sucks that you're always also worried when you're on Nintendo, even if you can talk to other people. I get frustrated just like everyone else, and sometimes I curse. You know what I mean? But Nintendo's that company that, like, if you curse on their thing, you're getting off. You're done. I only did it once. It was an accident. <laughs> I don't care. You said something that sounds like it. Yeah. <laughs> you ever watch the Falkers? What? <laughs> you're dead. It was a movie! <laughs> yeah, I, I, I do think that Nintendo needs to stop being uh, the parents and just let the parents be. Besides the parents, they need to realize. One of the biggest markets they have is people like me. They're older fanboys that grew up on Nintendo, Super Nintendo, yeah. and never got off. I do think a majority of kids now slowly are straying more away f- from Nintendo. I think your son's one that really likes Nintendo oh, look who is because others. you grew him up on it. But I think when you look at a lot of kids now, what do they want to do? Call of Duty. You know what yeah. I mean? They just want to shoot. The photo. And it's really scary, too, because I had a kid one time who was six when I was working at GameStop. Came in. Oh, you worked at GameStop? Uh, you did, too. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you, did you, did you, you be real? <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I just remember a kid came in, wanted a game, and I was like, I was like, oh, you, you know, uh, we didn't have it. And uh, he was like, okay, well, can you help me find a game? I think he wanted GTA, and uh, I think I just didn't want to sell it to him because I just... Because he's a child. Well, his his mom was okay with it, but sometimes I would just be like, "Oh, I don't have it," just because like I just feel like parents don't. Even if I tell a parent what's in the game, I feel like they do it just to shut the kid up. When it's like that's not be a parent. You know what? That's not something your kid should be playing. And don't get me wrong, I played GTA when I was young, but that's because I knew the difference between reality and a game. But then this, are, this but, kid clearly didn't. But then are you parenting that parent? That oh yeah, Nintendo. Yeah, I guess I am Nintendo. <laughs> But, you know, the kid, but it was, you know, it was really weird to me when a kid would walk up and he, I would show him games and they would be T, T for teen, stuff like that. Or I'd show him M games that I didn't think were so bad. Manhunt. You know, and all he would ever say to me is, can I kill stuff in this? And I'm like, can I kill stuff? <laughs> I'm like, and I look at his mom and I'm like, this is, is it weird to you? That this- yeah. It is really odd. Yeah. Like. Like yeah, that, if my son said that, I'd be like, wait a second. Yeah, you know? <laughs> I, I can understand that. You know what I mean? It, to me, when the most violent thing my, my child's doing in a video game is stepping on a turtle, <laughs> you know, yeah. popping him back in the shell, yeah. like, that's where it goes. But 
Um, Once again, can't parent everybody, buddy. Yeah, that's true. Uh, let's, two more things I want to cover. One is the Mario Odyssey. There will never be a game over screen. So apparently when your health runs out, it will then take ten coins and replenish your health. Um, and then if you don't have coins, don't worry. You're your still going to get a game over screen. Okay, what annoys me about this is not actually happening. I have no problem with them doing this. Uh, for years, I've been part of a lot of Nintendo communities so on Facebook, uh, just groups online, AOL back in the day. Google <laughs> and some messenger. It's a messenger. I used to go on AOL a lot myself. But we all, they always said when every other uh, system was upgrading and getting rid of light bars and stuff like that, everybody would complain that Mario continued on with live system, which was ridiculous. It was just so old fashioned. So finally, Nintendo announces they're doing away with that. People lost their mind online again. They're pissed off. And it's like, I really feel like you just can't make people happy. Um, I actually don't like it personally. I will say, here's, Shocked. No, here's what I do like. You criticize something Nintendo did? What? I like that when your health depletes, if you have the coins, the coins pay for your, your health to come back. And the reason I like that is because coins aren't just used for that in this game. Uh, they're used for your, out, outfits. your outfits and stuff like that. So now, as a player, if I know I'm not very good, I have to be more manageable with my money. I like that aspect. I do not like that when I run out of money... It's still saying to me, hey, don't worry, you're not going to be punished. I just feel like, what happens when you're stuck on a boss? You can't leave because you can't die. Mm -hmm. What do you do? You can't beat this boss. Sometimes it's good to just step away. You know what I mean? Sometimes it's... It's out of the boss. Sometimes it's... But what I'm saying is, how? What do you do? Just quit and go to the main menu and reload your game? Pretty much. That sounds like such a hassle. I, I feel like that's the same thing that a game over screen would do. It still just puts you back somewhere else. But I feel like most games, usually when you run out of just health in general, it would instantly just kick you out. Instead of yeah. getting a game over screen, it would just boot you outside what, of the box. What game, though? I feel like Call of Duty. What does Call of Duty do when you die? Brings you to the last checkpoint. It would continuously I, do yeah. that. Every other game. I, I just don't want to get stuck. What annoys me is this isn't doing anything different than the Lego games do. I actually this. haven't played a Lego game in a long time. The Lego games are the same thing. They take away your bolts if you die, and you'll never, you, you never lose a life or anything like that. It just penalizes you with money, and you have no problem with it. But it's just because Nintendo does it now, people are like, this is stupid, this is the worst thing ever. But what I think the problem, too, is, and we've already just kind of slightly Wait, talked on this. swear if you say this is kid-like, kid-friendly, it's Sam and I with No, guy. no. I, well, I think it actually has to do with people like you. You grew up with Nintendo. You're stuck in your ways, let's be honest. The reason you like a lot of Nintendo stuff, and we talk about this on the podcast, is it's comfort food for you. It is, it is always the same. Delicious. Okay, well, Nintendo's majority of their gamers are our age, are people that grew up on Nintendo. It's their comfort food, always the same. They just changed their comfort food. They took away their lives. And they, they added a health bar that never grew, that, you know, is always replenishing itself. I think the one thing that I will say Nintendo has always done well with Mario, and I think that this is something that continues that, is Mario is that game that kids can play and adults can play. It is challenging enough for an adult, but friendly enough for a kid that they can still jump in. I agree. And it it gives you enough challenge where you don't, you get frustrated as an adult, but it gives you enough challenge where eventually my my son is beating every Mario game. But you never feel, and even in Mario games where you lose and you get frustrated, you never feel like you were cheated. Well, and it's also, in Mario, as much as it's changed, it's always kept that pattern feel. Every boss always has a pattern and everything else. Yeah, it's always three, you know I mean? three At heads. the end of the day, as much as I like God of War, Call of Duty, Uncharted, and stuff like that, sometimes I just finish a boss or a level by luck. You know what I mean? I just so happen to move the right way at the right time something happens. Or Mario, you, it's literally always been it's pattern pattern. scales yeah. and memorization. But that's the same argument that gets made constantly. I mean, it's it's for comfort food that we want we want it the same way all the time, but then we complain that it's the same way, and then it changes, and then we complain that it's not the same way as it See, used to be. So. I'm someone who doesn't... I personally just like the, um, the challenge to it, and I just feel like this kind of doesn't make it as challenging. Not to say that it's... And I get it. Like I just said, it's 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 Mario has always been that game for kids and adults. So it's obviously still going to be challenging. But I feel like me just being able to stand there at some point and just watch because you know I could just be like, all right, it, it doesn't matter. But you still lose in the game, and it still brings you back to the beginning. I it's not like you can be in the middle of a boss fight, die, and we go back to him and his self down again. It's, 
You're gonna I thought it just continues. I'm pretty sure it just takes your... If you have the coin. I don't know if, when you don't have coins. No, it... But it, from the way that I was Like I said, it, it's like a Lego game. If I jump down a hole in it, it's it's going... won't give me a game over screen. You just come back up to the hole. It will bring me back to the last checkpoint I'm at, is what I took out of this. Oh, okay. The way so, that I took it was... Because every, li- every level still has a checkpoint flag, and, and I mean, if you got rid of that, there'd be no point I don't think there are checkpoints. There are. Are you sure? Because uh, there's me. multiple missions I've in this level. I've studied yeah. this game more than okay. Okay. You know um, what I'm talking about? New Donk City! Come on, Brenda! Oh! I love this guy! <laughs> that is the worst level I've even seen from that game. <laughs> really? I hate New Donk That's City. That's crazy. Really? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, we don't I, all have wrestling tattoos. I do really think, uh, I hate you. Too. This isn't a wrestling tattoo. <laughs> Jack Swagger. <laughs> but I, I just feel like, um, obviously this is something that is going to appeal to it's going to be helpful for kids and stuff like that, but I just, I don't know, I feel like it was kind of a, a step in the wrong direction. I, like I said, I think it's a good idea. And like I said, if you can complain about this, if you have no issue with Call of Duty that doesn't have a live system, or I don't know, every game nowadays that did away with the live yeah. system, everything. The way that I just took this fact, was... Matter of fact, I'm pissed I'm playing Crash and I have a live system in it again <laughs> because I ran out of 24 lives and went back to zero and got furious. I have 56 still. Yeah. So I really wish Crash would have done this. But um, I, I, the way that I took it, and maybe this is why I was so upset about it, was uh, if I run out of health, instead of me being put to a checkpoint, I'm still in that boss fight. I just stay there. You know what I mean? My yeah. health is just replenishing. I think it's more of a... So it's kind of like, oh, that would really be annoying if I want to... If, if I want to leave, I'd have to quit. You know, I think the only thing that's eliminating is like in Mario levels, when you got to the boss... In the level, and you died, it would take you all the way back to the beginning of the level if you ran out all of your lives. Yeah. I think they're getting rid of that. Okay. So you're always going to be able to fight that boss over. But like I said, if you hit him twice and die, I don't think you're going to be right back to where you yeah. hit him twice. Then you take okay. it back to square one. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm not... I never considered myself a Nintendo extremist. I love Nintendo. It's my first choice of everything. It's the only choice. But <laughs> It's now my second choice. But, but I'm, I'm never upset if they change something or if they make this thing into this thing. And I actually like that. want change. Yeah, I like my, I my, like the change. My favorite Zelda games are the, the two most odd ones. Majora's Mask is my number one, and then Wind Waker is number two. And I mean, think while Wind Waker is an odd one? I think Wind Waker was odd when it came out. Let's really look back at it. Wind Waker has got a lot of love now, but when it was first announced, while it was on its way out, no one wanted that game. I know, it was in Summer Camp defending it. To a me. lot of people... Christian Summer Camp on top of that. Oh. You know what I mean? So we weren't cursing. <laughs> But people were saying some people bad things about it. Yeah. They're like, this game looks poop. <laughs> what? <laughs> um, Go to the prayer corner. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So let's move on to the last thing. This one was actually pretty big. I, I typed this up really in thought. I, I just want you to know our special guest, Ryan, has sent the new notes, and he was like, wow. That's a lot. Like, that's a lot of notes. I was like, I gotta study this every week or he gets pissed. <laughs> it's like a homework assignment. If I don't do it. He's gonna be. I mad. get really mad when I'm the only one. Well, that's what I asked. So I was like, Are there any like? Is there anything I should know or anything? No. And I'm like, Oh, there's Castlevania. I could have watched that. But I got the notes this morning. Wow. <laughs> you, got, you gave them what? to him. Way to, to the way to tell I me. gave him the notes Friday so uh, you could have them. Oh, no. And then I sent him a revised one because I did add three things to it See, last night. See, what happens is I had to work. Do I have the revised one either? Yeah, the revised you, you have the revised, <laughs> I'm assuming. Um, so the last thing I wanted to talk about was Metroid. And Metroid Prime 4 is coming out. I know. That's exactly why I wanted to talk about it. It's really exciting. So I was thinking the other day, I was like, Metroid is a series I personally have always, I, I've always loved. As it has its like, misses, yes, Other M was horrible. You know, there are some games in it eh, I say that bad. I would say are really bad, and then there are some that are really good. And let's be honest, Metroid's story is poop. doesn't really have a good story. But I would say the <laughs> environmental story you get from the game is really good. Besides Federation Force and Other M, I feel like it's been a solid franchise. But continue. I wasn't saying that it wasn't a solid franchise. All right, continue on. Anyway, uh, so Metro Prime 4 was finally announced, um, uh, and I thought, why has it been so long since Metroid Prime 3? You know what I mean? We haven't really gotten a true sequel, and Metroid, in general, when you look at it, has always had these large gaps between yes. games. And so I wanted to really look into it, and I was curious if it was, is Nintendo not releasing it because they're not selling which is odd to me because so many fans seem to be asking for it. So are fans asking for it just not, just not buying it, and Nintendo is justified for not releasing it, 
as often as you know we say we would like, or is it that fans are buying it and you know it's just still not enough? Maybe it's just not reaching enough people. Right. Um, so I looked at every Metroid sale. And I wrote it down. I know. So the Prime series. You're so proud of yourself. Oh man! I, well, I was really bored. So, <laughs> and I was really thinking about this. <laughs> and this is what I do when I'm bored. And this isn't just. He's for at Metroid. work. And this is what he's singing over. <laughs> this isn't just for Metroid. There are other games that I think follow this as well, um, which I lead into. Um, but the whole Prime trilogy together, all three games, have sold 7.15 million units, which accounts for 46.4 percent of entire Metroid games sold. It's almost fifty percent of yeah. Metroid games, yes. and just three. That's kind of crazy to me. So let's look at the sales of each one. The original Metroid on the NES sold two point seven million, two point seven three to be exact. Super Metroid actually did less on the Super Nintendo with one point four million, um, which I thought was odd because Super Metroid, in my opinion, is considered the greatest Metroid. Yeah, it, in, my, in my opinion, is the best Metroid. I agree. It's I can I can see some people argue Prime, the first Prime, but and that's the one that's coming out for the 3DS, right? remake of two. Uh, no. Super Metroid technically the, is a remake of one. The one coming for the uh, the um, Super Nintendo, I mean the 3DS is the remake of the first one, which I guess would be a remake of Super yeah. and the original. Yeah. Super Duper Metroid. That's pretty much what it is. Super Duper Trooper <laughs> <laughs> See that? <laughs> that Kirby poster behind you, Superstar Ultra? That's what we get. So um, then we have Prime 1 and 2 on GameCube. Together, they sold 4.5 4.15 million units. Um, and then we have the... Uh, did I just skip over something? 4.15 million. Oh, here we go. The Wii games. Uh, each Wii game averaged at 1.13 million. And the two GBA games combined sold 1.26 million. Um, while these numbers seem high, like I said, really it's it's not that high when you compare it to other games and other franchises. Look at Splatoon alone. Within its first week of being released in December... Sold 1.5 million, and just and that's in December. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So really, when you look at Metroid, it really isn't selling. Which uh, how well did Metro Prime Three do? Uh, three did about 1.13, 1.1 million by itself versus the other two combined in the game. Yeah, the only explanation I can really think about that, and to me, even that that logically doesn't make sense, is the GameCube wasn't a great selling system. Mm-hmm. It did okay, so I could see not too many units being sold on that. But then again, Splatoon came out on the Wii U, which I think sold four altogether. I think yeah. it was about. I have one, you have one, and, and we one. Yeah, and we each bought like a couple million copies. <laughs> 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 That's how that number got so high. But I'm, I'm the numbers. The numbers seem like you said pretty big for a for you know a game selling, but then when you compare it to Splatoon. Which was a new IP by itself on a Wii U, mm-hmm. and that's not even like I, I didn't want to bring in other franchises either because I could have, I easily could have brought up Uncharted, but I didn't want people to be like, "Oh, he's attacking Nintendo again," because it's not just Nintendo. I mean, you are, but, um, no, no. But, I mean, at the time of the GameCube, like the I, PlayStation Two was out, Xbox. That's out. A lot, that's the one I would want. That's I'm glad you went that. That's the direction I wanted to go and see what is Nintendo. When did Nintendo release these, and what were they going against? Because that makes the huge difference. It does, but let's also go back to the Super Nintendo then. The Super Nintendo was the powerhouse of that generation, and yeah. Metroid. Are you kidding me? But Sega. the numbers on the Super Nintendo were amazing. What was that? It was only. It was less than the NES. Or I'm just kidding. That's what I'm saying. The NES or one the was NES, amazing. The NES. That's what I'm saying. But now that makes sense because the NES was the only thing at the time. Yeah, so I agree. that would make the sense. The NES really only had the Atari to go up against, and the NES was revolutionary. Yeah. I mean, you know. So I, mean? I can. To me, it would make sense. that one Super Metroid, even though to me is the greatest Metroid game ever. Love it. Even though it's best, still a remake of one, and number two, that was at the launch of the Sega Genesis, which was also a huge competition at the time. And I will admit that I'm sorry, Nintendo. I was a Sega kid growing up, man. Okay. I was. I, 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 I'm just saying, because this isn't the only game series that has this problem. Mega Man, one that. Well, we've discussed I, this before. Yeah. Everybody cries. That we don't get Mega Man sequels, but they've never nobody sold. Nobody buys Mega Man. When you look at Mega Man sales, any of them, they have never sold well. When you look at them, like most only reach a million. I'm trying to figure out what it is about me because you've ever played Mega Man Legends? No. Oh, you don't. You're part of the problem. <laughs> One of the greatest to me overall Collections. games in collection, amazing, and they just it. And every time it gets released, it never sells well. 
Yeah. Even when it got re-released finally after people clamoring and asking for it to get re-released, it wasn't even downloaded that much. Like, <laughs> yeah, it I downloaded it twice though. <laughs> it, it really does suck because uh, Mega Man is one of those games I love, and that's what I was saying with. Metroid, it, when I looked at these numbers, it made sense to me why they don't release it all the time. And then I even threw in the F-Zero numbers in there. Because F-Zero is a racing game that I love, and I keep asking, like, why haven't we gotten a race, an F-Zero since the GameCube? You know what I mean? But it's like, it didn't even reach a million units sold. I think the potential they have now with this Metroid coming out, and I hate to say this, but the fact that the Switch has been so limited on its release... A lot of people like a lot of people have just been buying things up on the Switch because it's released on the Switch. Hopefully, that will improve these numbers. Well, the problem too we have to think about is this: is, this isn't probably coming out anytime soon. Metroid Prime Four. Honestly, give it next year. I think it's going to be released. They said next year, but I, I feel like it's so much further. If all they showed was a logo, personally, if it comes out next year, awesome, and I think it will do really well. I think if it goes up against other games, like if it gets released the same year. While as the switch is finally being established and getting a bunch of other stuff, I think then it's going to be. Just That's like, what I'm saying. So I feel like it's it's all about timing too, with this. But I honestly, I definitely think it's Nintendo. I definitely think it's next year because Nintendo does that weird thing where they'll mention a game, yeah, and they're like, yeah, that's it, and then like, oh, here's the first trailer. It comes out next month. Bam, and then we'll never. <laughs> that's it. Like, that's I just true. think they changed their marketing a lot recently. Like, just showing the picture of it. I mean, people who know what it is know what it is. So, I mean, they don't even really need a trailer right but, now. But, let's be honest. a trailer later at a time when they're not trying to hawk arms and Splatoon well, and, like, all this here's, stuff. here's my argument for that, then. All right, I agree with you. People who know what it is know what it is. They're going to get excited. E3 was the one time you would, I think we all can agree, that people who aren't even Nintendo fans are watching Nintendo, right? Mm-hmm. You just showed them a still image of a name of a game that they may not know. But then I, how many people would probably search for what was that thing that just happened? Where people lost their minds. You've seen the one guy sit on fire in the crowd. <laughs> I, <laughs> they showed the forward. <laughs> I, I just think that they should have showed gameplay because clearly the numbers for Metroid, they, it isn't that great. Even new IPs like Let's Look at Uncharted have done better than... I think it's one of those... Nintendo forgets that doesn't sell well. People have been asking and asking, so they figured... Let's shut them up. (laughs) I just think it was a marketing thing, because I don't think they want to take attention away from ARMS 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 right now. Next month, they'll And not to mention, Nintendo, and I I brought this up, Nintendo was the only one out of E3, out of Microsoft and Sony, that their whole show was this year. Everything they're releasing is this year. And all of... Kirby's next year. I agree, Kirby and Metroid, Metroid and Pokemon. Yeah, but majority. But I'm <laughs> I saying, agree with that. Yeah, majority of it is this year. year. Like they right. literally gave us a game yeah. a month but until next year. What I will yeah. say, Microsoft. I think Sony. I mean, I think Nintendo has to do that because they don't have the luxury that Microsoft and Sony have. Microsoft and Sony, they really can live off of third party. Mm. This whole holiday, you know what I mean? You have Wolfenstein, you have Assassin's Creed. There's a lot coming out. That isn't going to be on Switch. That that Sony and Microsoft can be like, that's fine. Microsoft let's, sucks. Well, let's hold back our games. Nobody likes Microsoft. Whereas I think Nintendo, they're like, Microsoft. we we do need to release something every month, um, whether or not. And I do agree that I think that they tried to make sure that they didn't take any sound away from those games because they have to do that. Right. I just would have much rather them have not even showed the Metroid because let's be honest, any podcast that I've listened to, any newsreel that I've seen, the top talked about thing of E three is that Metroid logo. And it's because fanboys like us, who really like Metroid, are really excited right, but for it. from a marketing standpoint, that's all they had to do. Well, and little buddy, you, you're know. not the only one that can do a little research. Okay. I was wondering, your hatred for the Switch, how they're doing on their launching games that are coming out. Mm-hmm. You know, they're just putting out. This is the best lineup Nintendo's had with game sales for each game that came out. You know why? Because there's nothing else to play. Because there's nothing else to play, number one. <laughs> number two, I think it's because Ryan said, this is the first time in a long time. I feel like Nintendo's backing up their own games, though. I mean, that they're very proud. It's the new leadership. I don't know. I think Nintendo's always done this, though. Let's be honest. Like, let's look back at all their E3s. Nintendo's never had third party. They've really always... I agree. They, they've always had to focus on what they can push but out. But I feel like... You know what? I didn't get a stupid Kirby game where I had to control things on... Oh, I'm yet. Canvas. Yet. And here's the other it's, it's thing. Still here's the other thing in. that I'm very proud of. And I was talking to my mother of all people about this today. Everything I've gotten on the Switch, yes. which size one two Switch, I can play with just the controller. 
no yeah, yeah, no motion. motion. I do agree with that. Nothing like that. I feel like at least that's a step in the right direction for me. And I think that's helping right now. I can agree with that. I'd be honest, I was very scared when they announced that these two Joy Cons. <laughs> yeah, what? <laughs> they're still motion control. I was really nervous that I'm like Nintendo, just let it go, let it go. But so far, they made me really happy with. You know what I mean? Yeah. Arms. Well, I think exactly. they, yeah, I think they knew what they were doing, though, because there are people that do like the motion controls, and on this, they're a lot they're a lot more smooth than, yeah. than on the Wii U. I agree with yeah, you. So I, I, I literally only played ARMS once with motion controls. I've been playing with a controller. I've been very happy with that. Very I happy. only play with the motion controls on really? ARMS. Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah, we can play around. I'll okay. get you upstairs. <laughs> so. What I will say is um, I'm, I'm, ha- I'm happy that the Switch has been selling well. And I'm glad that the games have been selling well. While I do think it's mostly due to a lack of titles, I you know, it's still good. Regardless of if that's the reason or not, it's healthy that the system is getting those games purchased all the time. It's telling Nintendo, hey, we're taking a step in the right direction. I'm curious, though, is if this these numbers are going to start to really come to a stop. You know what I mean? Because while a lot of people that own the Switch, a lot of them I know personally are Nintendo fans. No one I know that owns a Switch yet or is that person that I said, hey, would you get a Switch? They're not the Je- the Scots. They're not mm-hmm. Mr. Scots. You know what I mean? They're not. You call Mr. You always call them Mr. Scott <laughs> whenever you talk, talk about them. But they're not the Scots of the world. You know what I mean? They're not the Mikes. People who don't and really dog. care too much about Nintendo, but Nintendo hasn't convinced them yet to get the system. And that's where I, what I think Nintendo needs to do. I think right now it's great. Nintendo is living off of the fans, us, who really like Nintendo. I think they need to get more people on board who aren't their fans. Because everyone I know that has a Nintendo, I expected to get a Nintendo. Right. <laughs> well, I think that, I don't know if it's just me defending Nintendo, but I feel like the way that they're doing things is the way that they should be doing things. Like, they don't need to show gameplay from Metroid yet because it's not coming out anytime soon. So just playing the seed. You hear that? Anytime soon. 2018. 2018. 2018. But, I'm joking. That's a year um, away, buddy. It is. Just plant the seed. People are going to go nuts for it. But show the things that people think of when they think Nintendo. But show that there are also nuances to it now that make it better than what it was before. Yeah. And then you get... Because, I mean, for some reason, Nintendo always strangleholds its own systems. They only put three out every week, and that's, that's it. But Well, they, they've always done that. <laughs> Yeah. Fake scarcity all yeah. the time, but I mean it works. It's already sold more now than the Wii U sold ever. Yeah, um, yeah. and I, I I think you know that they they set out the calendar that they're putting out a new a new game every month. I think that is going to keep sales going steadily through to the holiday season, and then maybe from there they'll get more partnerships with third party titles because they'll think. Not this is now. different. See, here's we're still also very early in the Switch's life. We still haven't seen what their marketplace on um, games. Yeah, because I mean, you have the true. Wii and the Wii U. Third parties aren't going to be like, this is probably the one. <laughs> so I mean, <laughs> this is one. That we're well, <laughs> I mean, we're honestly still getting third parties saying that they're not going to bring stuff to the Switch though because of its underpower and stuff like that. Agree. We, we we recently had a developer odd. Um, the guy who developed Odds, Oddworld, Apes Odyssey, yeah. whatever the hell it is, so. he recently came out and he said that um, he he has no faith in the Switch. Not that not that it's not a nice piece of hardware, but the fact that why would third parties put a game on it when that means it's more development time on every single game that they want to make because now they have to scale it down for the Switch. What's the last thing he developed? Uh, he just came out with Odd Oddworld's New and Tasty. Yeah, well, you can shut his mouth. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think See, you, you, you can't good. just do that because you don't good. like their opinion. I'm just saying that uh, the Oddworld games have always done pretty well. You know, they're respected games. I'm just saying that, and he's not the only one, though. Let's be honest. The A guy, lot the, of developers. The guy that ran his mouth from Titanfall too. Yeah, with Soul Four copies. But I, and I'm not going to sit here and just like bash Nintendo for that. What I will say though that I think a lot that Nintendo needs to try to get out of, and maybe maybe Nintendo's okay being this. A lot of people that have talked to me have said Nintendo doesn't need to be a competition with Sony and Microsoft because they're okay with being that second console. And I was like, I wouldn't. Is that really okay to them though? Like, I personally would think if I was a company, my goal would be to be the Nintendo I used to be. What was the main console when I was a kid? Nintendo. Until the PlayStation came out, 
Nintendo was always my main console. Any Sega console I got was secondary. But You're talking about the Game Gear? I got an N64 yeah. before I got a PlayStation, but then I ended the, up getting a PlayStation. The issue is, though, that as much as I can say that, I remember when the Wii U launched, Nintendo lost something ridiculous that year. Like $60 million, something like that. Uh-huh. They lost money-wise, and I was like, oh my god, Nintendo's going to end up being... You know, going out bankruptcy, and then I read this article that was like, as much money as Nintendo has been losing lately, since they owned the market for so long, originally, they have enough money they can survive. They can literally years. lose twenty million a year for the next twenty years and still yeah. not can be considered in debt. Yeah, or bankrupt. Well, I think I, I read something that was saying that if no one bought any Nintendo product for fifteen years, they could still they would still be around. I was like, Jesus, that's a, they're pretty much the apple yeah. of the video and, it's, and the issue is, like I said, it's because they own. So I really feel like, although, yeah, it's weird that they would be okay with being in second place, that's probably enough to be like, hey, Maybe. we're comfortable. At the end of the day, too, what's I, weird, and I know this sounds so cheesy, one, the, one of the reasons I like playing Nintendo so much is I do feel like the people that develop for Nintendo develop fun games because they like to make fun games. I can agree that I don't feel like any of them there are like, you know what, I want to make a good story. It's, you know what, I really like the way that this character feels. Because I will say this, when you run around as Mario, it feels great. It feels good. Platforming as Mario is, is probably the best platforming, I would say, out there. Mm, better than Crash. Yes, yes <laughs> way better than Crash. God, I hate you, Crash. <laughs> but, you know, I, I, I just think, I, I would like to see Nintendo also take strides in other directions as well, such as storytelling. You know, make, Bowser is my favorite Mario character, but I'm, I'm kind of getting tired of him always being the villain. I don't know if this is just like a jaded statement from somebody who just supports Nintendo, but I feel like Nintendo's philosophy is not, we're in this race, we can't be second place. I think it's just that Microsoft and Sony are racing each other to constantly do the same thing while we're just going to do this over here. And be different. And be different. I can understand that. I don't know. Like I said, maybe they are okay with just existing. Maybe as, as, to them, maybe they're okay with as long as they're a company and they're doing what they want to do. They're okay. I think it would be a lot more fun to work for Nintendo and in that creative environment than to be like, all right, well, Sony and Microsoft, we fight each other, but we just put the same stuff out. I think it depends. If you're into, if you're someone who just wants to come up with levels and stuff, I agree. If you're a level designer, probably working for Nintendo is the best. Mm-hmm. I think if you're a writer, <laughs> yeah, yeah, but that also, be honest, right, right, or video game writers are going way away anymore. They're actually getting now Hollywood studios to write. Scripts, I, agree. Like, I agree. Actual authors, but I feel like Nintendo isn't doing that. Oh, you no. get what I mean. So I'm saying, obviously, Nintendo if you're a writer. Goes, Hey, George the Janitor, what do you think we should do next? Year? I don't know, Bowser gets married or something? Let's get ready to <laughs> do it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, maybe, maybe let Mario wear something different? <laughs> Holy crap! <laughs> Wait a second. Hey, Bowser's not, <laughs> this is Bowser's, how this, Bowser's not married. How do you get all them kids? <laughs> Let's make them not his kids. Let's do that. Hey, Phil, sit down. What do you think? Mario and Sombrero. I like it. That works. The guy who, the janitor there, they make all the janitors wear Mario and Luigi hats. This is how they got the idea for the uh, hat trick. He put the Mario on his, the hat on his mop while he went to the bathroom. Guy came out. That's it. That's it, man. <laughs> this is how we get new powers. <laughs> but, um, I, I, yeah, I just wanted to bring up the topic of the Metroid thing because I really think when you look on the internet, you see a lot of people calling for these games, but I'm curious if it's people are calling for it, and maybe it's just everything on the internet looks huge, you know what I mean? Someone complains about a bug, or, yeah. oh, my Joy-Con broke this way, Nintendo sucks, and then yeah. everyone's like, my Joy-Con broke that way. <laughs> I don't, I was just with you the other day, your Joy-Con's fine, what are you yeah, talking yeah. about? Well, I want to say it broke, too. So it's, it's hard when it's the internet. I said that guy set on fire. Everybody's going to say that guy set on fire. <laughs> it's, it's hard what, when it's What I think Zabo is saying is people buy Metroid. Just buy it, right? Don't, don't. I'm just saying, let's not ask for something and not support it then. Don't stop Pilgrim it, all right? Yeah. It's going to keep going back to that. That pisses me off. So many people request that movie. Nobody saw it, man. Nobody. So we have uh, one last thing to do for this episode. Uh, the Enthusiast Recommendation. It's called Enthusiast Pick. Change the name now. Was it the easiest words. pick? Yeah. Oh, name? damn it. Don't I honestly could not remember. Our listeners, man. All right. Well, the You couldn't remember last week when it was his turn. He had no <laughs> issue remembering it. <laughs> this week, it's my recommendation. It's, what is that? All right, I thought all week from this. Really? Yes. 
And I didn't want to do a comic because you did a comic. I want to do a game because if I anything I'm going to do most likely be Nintendo and somebody would stab me like M Dog. So I'm going with a movie. Ooh. And it's a 1980s movie called Barry Gordy's Last Dragon, which <laughs> is the retelling of Bruce Lee's Last Dragon with black people. <laughs> One of the greatest, Is greatest. A black man named Barry Gordy. No, his name is Bruce Leroy. <laughs> okay. All right, and he fights Shonuff, the Shogun of Harlem. Shonuff. Yes. Uh, as cheesy as I'm making this movie out to seem, it is actually probably one of the best movies that came out of Generation. It never takes itself too seriously, yet it is still a fun, serious movie. And at the end, you know, you got to get the glow in order to move your body. So I recommend it. It just recently came out on Blu-ray, actually, a couple months ago. And it's a really decent price, and the quality is actually amazing for being upconverted from the 80s film. Wow. It looks really good on Blu-ray. Are the darks really dark? The darks are really dark, so the reds are really reds. <laughs> so, which it, it does help, because sometimes a movie getting transferred over to Blu-ray does not do it justice. Uh, Wolf with Jack Nicholson, you can clearly see when it's Jack Nicholson and when it's a guy in Jack Nicholson mask running and jumping. All right? <laughs> kind of takes you out of it a little bit. But that's my recommendation. Barry Gordy's Last Dragon. Okay. On Blu-ray. Awesome. Sounds delightful. Also vanities in it, and everybody likes vanity. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think yeah. that's... Anything else uh, we want to add into this? I'm good. I just want to thank <laughs> Ryan for coming down. Oh, yeah, thank you for having me. Yeah, thanks thanks for being on. Had you. such a fun time with you, you know what I mean? Normally I'm used to being ganged up on from my <laughs> from one dog person. and Zabo. <laughs> and now it's nice to have the shit on the other foot. It felt real good. <laughs> so it was nice. Once again, though, if you get a chance, uh, once again, Miss Ray TV, come check me out. I was on there looking a fool trying to do this... Um, Challenge. Challenge. That didn't work out. You know what I mean? But, uh, yeah, so this is episode 31 of The Enthusiast. If you like what you heard here, please subscribe and go ahead and hit that thumbs up button because Ryan the other day sat and broke the thumbs down button. Mm. Yeah, he broke every single one. I did. You're going to have to hit that thumbs up. Unfortunately, (laughs) that's all you can do. If you like what you heard, again, you can always follow us on Facebook, Twitter, SoundCloud, Twitch, and... YouTube. YouTube. <laughs> I always forget one. Thank yeah, you. The little one. <laughs> the little one. Our main <laughs> revenue, that's all. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. So this is episode 31. And I did it all for you, man. You did. You I did. I did it all for you. Um, also, oh, did you, did you turn us off? No, no, we're going. We're going. Also, I'm um, going to put our screenshot up of my amazing birthday present I got from you. Our new hats. Uh, if you guys like it, well, maybe you maybe can start putting out some of these. Yeah. And I mean, you can purchase it. It's really nice. It was designed by my good best buddy over here. <laughs> You're welcome. I'm me. glad you like it. Well, this is the Enthusiast episode 31, and we are gone. Peace!